Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Receipts Podcast. Welcome to Strong Word. Presented to you by Me Undies. Uh, our viewers and listeners know this, but I'm a big believer in Me Undies. They're a great combination of super comfortable fit and sustainably made product. The naturally soft fiber they use comes from beechwood trees, ends up being the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. Me Undies guarantees you'll love their undies or you get your money back. That's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. I double check the math myself. And every month they have new and exciting prints that arrive at your door in a fun bag. Super comfortable. I talk about them all the time. I'm wearing a diamond print right now, I believe, which is... Uh, Show it. Wow. Wow. I don't think you can get it anymore. Hand down. Bum, bum, I'm sorry, bum, I'll, bum. Let me finish reading this and I'll, I'll get ready. <laughs> uh, MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time buyers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and get free shipping. And again, MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. So get 20% off a pair of the most comfortable undies you'll ever put on. Get your 20% off your first pair of free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Now I'm going to show you my underwear. Bum, 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 So thanks to MeUndies for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. I want to play Minecraft. This episode of the Rooster Teeth podcast is, of course, also brought to you by Squarespace. Love you too, Squarespace. But we're going to talk about you a little later. And then that one over there, which she just talked about. I'm Gus. Oh, I'm John. Good lord. Oh, I'm Barbara. Yeah, oh, I'm Bernie. Oh, and I'm still Gus. You guys, uh, so South by Southwest is going on. I feel like things are always a little hectic, a little crazy around here whenever South by South by. Yeah. I was just talking about this with Anna. Do you know anybody who travels to Austin to attend South by Southwest every year? Who I mean, travels? the majority of people who attend South by, don't they travel for But I feel like everybody who comes to South by Southwest is there for a reason, like they're working. Right, like they're there. To oh, like do as something. just an attendee. Right. Oh, like who's like? Oh, it's South by's coming up. I gotta. I gotta. I, got, I go every year. Right. I've never run into that person, but it's like Coachella. I've met a bunch of people who travel to Coachella, oh, and they're gonna let you know. Oh, I know. Oh, <laughs> you'll you'll Bur- find out. That's Burning Man. Burning Man is like, mm-hmm. man. If, if I only know they're going to Coachella if or I follow them on Festival. Instagram. Oh, Fire Festival. Oh, that dude. He uh he got convicted, right? Oh, he did. Yeah. on a wire fraud. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got him for wire fraud. The uh the Scarelli, is that how you say his name too? The, the farmer bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's uh seven seven, years. seven, seven or fourteen years Did prison. you see the seven. excerpts seven from juror selection for his trial? Those no. are great. I'll, I'm gonna re- I'll, they I'm were like, already like inclined to just hate him, like just by looking at him. Yeah, just the interviews for uh people to be on the jury for his trial. Well, I, I think reasoning that you know people who are attending for work is because that's like the industry we're in so the majority of people you know are people who would it be attending. confirmation bias yeah yeah, yeah I'm just saying it's like I would like to meet the person who is like I just come to South by just go year. on the street yeah so this is well, uh, it is technically an industry event so yeah it'd be I guess it would be the same as going to like a the, hair salon convention and everyone there just happens to work in the hair industry of course they do yeah right? yeah but I don't know. I just feel like there'd be somebody who just attends South by. Well, for like, yeah, for like music, I think. Music That's probably the bigger one. Well, we went and saw Ready Player One, and this is the first time I'd ever seen this happen, but that was a very full theater. And so the theaters for those kind of showings, there's a big chunk that's just reserved already for the people that made the movie and have their friends and everything there. And then the next people that are let in are people who are like, get express press passes. And then the next is people like us who have film or platinum badges. And then that's already filled the theater like almost to capacity. And then they let just people who have like a wristband maybe come in. And when we had already been in, I was waiting for to get a, a drink, like a coffee. I saw them let in like five people from that part of the line. And those yeah. five people who, by the way, the badge you're talking about, we were very fortunate enough to be given free badges to South by. We got the, the platinum badges. Those are sixteen hundred dollar bags. Sixteen hundred and fifty to be exact. Is that true? A ninety nine dollar yeah. RTX ticket ain't looking so bad now, <laughs> yeah. folks. But it was like, and I we had a sixteen hundred dollar badge. I didn't. I want to be clear. I did not pay sixteen hundred dollars no. for this. It was very nice of them to give us the badge. I paid for Bernie's. Yeah, John paid for mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have Gus. You know how like this is how much I like Ashley. She really wanted to go see Ready Player One for the no, mm-hmm. and so the screening was last night. So we had to line up. The movie started nine thirty. We had to line up at seven. To see it, wow! Two and a half hours early. Wow! You stayed the whole time. I stayed the whole time. That's, I did. I stayed the whole time. That's and, like the, like going to the Alamo way back in the day. That you know, Aaron Morgan said that to me. Our friend Flash. Yeah. He said that he goes because I know how you feel about that because when the Alamo moved to reserve seating, they used to just have 
No reserve seating. You can only buy tickets like five minutes before oh, the show nightmare. started. Yeah, so people would show up two hours early. You never know if you could get into an Alamo right, you, movie. You'd show up two hours early, you'd be like, well, the line's coming down. This like when the old uh, location. Like, the line's coming down the stairs, and we're only a little down the block. We're probably going to make it in. But those guys at the, in front of that restaurant, they're definitely not and making it in. there would not be anybody like counting the people waiting in line to like tell no. you, hey, don't bother lining up. No. Oh, that's shitty. And it was like, I think it was of all the place, like a TripAdvisor review or a Yelp review. But I'm pretty sure it was TripAdvisor, where there was this huge debate and outcry about the Alamo Draft House theaters moving to reserve tickets, and there were people like, "This ruins the entire line culture of the Alamo." It's it's line like line culture. I was like, "You got to be are fucking complaining kidding me!" To wait that in is line a, anymore? that is an Austin problem. That is an Austin problem for sure. For well, sure. Uh, what are we gonna do if we're not waiting in a line? But we weren't guaranteed to get into this movie. I mean, it's like if you'd paid sixteen hundred bucks and then you wait in line for two and a half hours and then didn't get into the movie, it's like yeah. What in the world? Yeah. yeah. What in the world? I mean, it's just like that's crazy. And even a normal badge, I think it's like eight hundred. I think so. Seven or eight hundred. Nine hundred. Wow, that's a lot. What's of money. the cheapest South by badge you could get? I think you can get like I think any one badge is like nine ninety nine or whatever you yeah, said. Yeah. Like, yeah. But you can buy if you buy them further in advance. Yeah, like uh, uh, Wes has a film badge, and that's only like three hundred dollars cheaper than ours. Yeah. Yeah, they really push you to. Spend a little more to get the. I've already the spent thirteen hundred dollars. I might as well get a platinum. Holy I say a little cow. more. It's like three hundred bucks is a, like. I know <laughs> three hundred bucks is not much. Yeah, it's like, Come if on. you already spent thirteen hundred, you're already you're already invested. Well, if you are traveling from out of town, at the end of the day, the sixteen hundred bucks, if you are going to pay to go to this festival, you're paying more than that airfare and hotel and yeah. meals. It's like the the trip is going to cost if you, you more. If you just than buy that. it by like, if you're at South by the entire nine days, you're going to talks and events and movies and fil- and music, music and, and everything. Like there, I could justify it. Right, but if you're just like you just want to go to one thing, right, or like a few parties or whatever, definitely not worth it. No, me. and it's, it's also a lot of money. Also, I think South by is kind of uh, shifting a little bit the way E3 is now, where it's more so about what's outside the event than inside the event. Yeah, you know? the film festival is different because you go to the movies. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not showing random movies like down the block or something like that. They might be doing that, but um, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, so there's a, a lot of stuff, but there's also a lot of stuff you don't need a badge to get into. Yeah, it's like all like, the ancillary stuff. Like you went to the Westworld thing, right? Went to the Westworld thing. Oh, how was that? How what was, was that? What was that? Yeah, what did they have out there? Uh, they basically got you on a, a charter bus and then took you way out to Manor to this small western town they built out in the middle of nowhere out there. Sweetwater, right? It's Sweetwater. Yeah. They literally created a Sweetwater replica. And you would enter through like the entrance of the show and go through the train and then you walk out and you're in this actor populated hosts populated world that has stories and resets and events and mysteries for you to uncover. And there's uh, you can shoot a dude. There's like quests you could do. No, <laughs> only no. if you have a platinum badge. I yeah. will say this. I, I, five hours early to shoot the guy. Wow, I witnessed <laughs> I witnessed something happen on Sunday when I went. Because I uh, was watching an event happen where some guys were roughing up uh, like uh, with like the, the town drunk and then, then they got roughed up by the local sheriff. And so by the end of this event, the guys are on the floor, you know, knocked out. Some idiot that was an attendee decides to run up and try to take one of the, the actors prop gun. And then uh. gets chased off by the uh, by the sheriff actors like no 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 you can't do that he, the actor stayed in character and got him off, but then I watched a producer dude who has like the earpiece in go up, grab him and escort him off the, yep. the premises. Get out! Good. So it's like you idiot! Like yes they they like they like you can't just go and grab the prop gun that is. Right, you're not you're not in Westworld. Yeah, <laughs> I have a question, um, because I, I saw everyone tweeting about it and I haven't seen Westworld yet. What's the difference between the black hat and the white hat? Does it is it something that's going to spoil the show? For it's you? No, like, it's not a spoil no. thing. Okay, it's it's just like a typical like cowboy trope, right? Like it's are a, you a good guy. Or a yeah, bad it's guy. a representation of maybe how you would will act in the park. It's like role playing. Do you gotcha. want to go lawful good or do you want to go chaotic evil? Yeah, that's it. Are and you there I to like the cause trouble? Is like, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. you're just going to go enjoy black the western evil. town and have your little fantasy and go ride horseback and camping. And at black a, hat, you're like shooting people and the fucking everything. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then at the 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 activation thing when you showed up to check in the first thing you did was go upstairs and then you went to this table and they were like what's your name and you give them your name and they're like you're a black cat and they give you that and so oh, they would fuck, tell you it, yeah it's fucking dark it's that show is really dark you, should, you really need to watch it the yeah. season's coming out really like soon. it's like just How what 
April 20th or 22nd? 22nd. 22nd. Okay. Yeah. What if you removed all the morality from moral choices? Mm -hmm. Is like, that's what it is. And there's no repercussions to your actions. No repercussions whatsoever. Cool. I mean, not even guilt. Yeah, yeah. that's like number one on my list. It's that's good. Much, yeah. It's good. I, uh, hey, I'll talk to you about that afterwards. There's a fair amount of dick in it. I've heard. There's a giant front and center dick. That, that, that's a great exchange. <laughs> what did she say? Like, oh, your talents are being wasted. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's like, they talk about a certain dick for a few episodes, and then the episode comes where you see it, and they don't just put it in the background. It's like, it's like if if this is the camera, the dick is this entire part of the screen. Is that's it what it is. Is erect or flaccid? It's flaccid, but it is it, yeah, aggressive he's, flaccid. He's a, he's a shower. A shower. Yeah. He is a shower. Is, do, would you prefer to be a shower or a grower? I won't ask you which you are, but it seems like... Grower. I'm a grower. You're a grower? Yeah. I think it's most people grow. No, well, I answer to both. Yes, I'm a grower, and I think it's better to be a grower, because showers what? You gotta deal with that all, all yeah, the time. Yeah, you gotta deal with it all the time, and then it's like, and then yeah. it goes from, like, unimpressive to, oh, that's impressive, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're, you can only get better. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that, because that's I would say... That's my entire motto of my life. I can <laughs> only get prefer? better. Yeah. Okay. Dick. There's like shower or grower, you don't care? Just dick. Yeah, you don't care. <laughs> by, the <laughs> by the time you get to it, it's all the same. Just give it to me. Just... <laughs> Just give so, me. So, I, I want, what, what is I, this, I though? <laughs> this is not a dick motion. Menendez. I, I, I want to read this uh, juror excerpt before we get too far from And I want to say the, I want to say some more about the South by thing. The Martin Shkreli oh, uh, juror Fuck. selection. So the court is talking to juror number 59. The court. Juror 59, come on up. Juror 59. Your Honor, totally he is guilty, and in no way can I let him slide out of anything because the court. Okay, is that your attitude toward anyone charged with a crime who has been not proven guilty? Juror 59. It's my attitude towards his entire demeanor, what he has done to people. The court. All right, we're going to excuse you, sir. Juror number 59. And he disrespected the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that last bit in. Fair wait, enough. Wait, wait, wait. Listen, I'm all for this guy being a jackass and... He should go to jail for what he did. But how did he disrespect the Wu-Tang Clan? He bought, he paid him like a million bucks for their album. I think he talked shit about the album yeah. after he bought it. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah, he loved so. to troll everything that he had. And so when people were like jealous of it, he was talking like, he's like, not only do I have it, don't, like he was talking trash about him. He's talking trash about yeah. it? Well, good luck on the inside, motherfucker. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to go over real well. Maybe he can like bring it in with him, like shove it up his butt. If he meets, <laughs> if he meets anybody in jail... Who either needed that drug or ran into someone who needed that or drug. Or did just like the Wu-Tang Or just like the Wu-Tang. The guy had that fucking douche nozzle. What was the drug? That wasn't the EpiPen thing. I didn't no. even know what it was. Actually, it might not have been. A, it was like a drug that was like really essential. It was kidney drug, wasn't it? I can't remember. We should know. If we listen, if we're going to be so outraged. Now. If we're going to yeah. be outraged. You're right. You're right. I, completely know our info. I hate it when, when I become ignorant about something that I have an opinion about. And I'm like, well, I shouldn't have this opinion anymore. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. I, if I've forgotten it, then why, why am I holding on to the emotion? He's probably a nice guy. He's fine. Oh, so sad he's going to jail. I want to say what they do before we got too far away from the lines and passes and South by Southwest convention stuff is that we also run our own live events. And I don't, you know, you're never, if you're going to have a bunch of people in one place, you're never going to solve the issue of crowd control and lines. Absolutely. Those exist. Yeah. When you go to a stadium, you end up in lines. You know, when you go to like Hall H is a two day wait to go to Hall H at Comic Con. Yeah. You know, lines are. When you have a big group of people, that's what happens. But it's right. one of those things where it's like, if someone has paid sixteen hundred dollars, it's just like, holy fucking god, that's unbelievable to me. Yeah, that's a lot of friggin' money yeah. for I two guess because it's oh, oh my god, is. this is a I guess a picture from South by Southwest. Is this this year? That's not their branding for this. It's year. It's this so year? No. Oh, last year. Last yeah. year. But uh, yeah, I mean that's a ton of people. Yeah. Well, that was a uh, uh, at the Westworld thing. the The whole thing was, uh, well, the preview night was invite only. But then the other nights was that if you replied to this event thing and got a ticket, you could go. But then they also had a standby line. But and so when I got there with Wes, I saw the standby line that time, and it was going way down the street. And I was like, "Is that a a line that we have to wait in now?" And he's like, "No, that's people that have been waiting here since like." Eight o'clock this morning, in hopes that yeah. at some point today they might get into the park. I think waiting in lines is not as bad as long as you go into the event or or the experience, knowing that that's going to be part of it. I think people who don't expect that have more trouble with that, and maybe get more aggravated. Was like if you understand that you're going somewhere that's going to have a two hour wait, or you're going to have to stand in line to get into it. It's like it's easier to deal with in that case. Yeah, the tough part for me is it's like there's there's always somebody who's got more time. 
that can just say, I'm going to show up two days early for Hall H and I'm then I'm just going to sit in Hall H the whole time. You know what I mean? I'm going to bring a sleeping bag. Yeah. <laughs> Gus did that for Phantom Menace. I he, did. He what, a, what a fucking mistake. <laughs> I mean, talk about questioning your life choices. Yeah. Um, so before we get away from it, the drug was Daraprim, a 62-year-old drug used for protozoal infections. Protozoal infections. The price was $13.50 and was then raised to $750 a tablet. Uh, wow. Wow. So, so that's uh, like two of them and you get a platinum badge. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you wait almost, two hours to take almost. It. almost. The uh It's it, like that drug in what was that movie? Limited? Unlimited? Unlimited. Unlimited with Bradley Cooper. I never saw it, but yeah. Uh, it's funny when people no, talk about that movie, they always limited. say unlimited with Bradley Cooper. Maybe it is limited. I think it is limited. No, it's unlimited. Limitless. 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 There you go. Yeah. Hey. I knew it wasn't limited. <laughs> yeah. Limited, I think, is a girls' clothing store in Canada. It's a brand, too. <laughs> <laughs> we got it here, too. I think I saw yeah. the other day that, you ever see that, uh, that store in the mall, Claire's? They sell, like, shitty earrings and stuff. Oh, hell yeah. They're declaring bankruptcy. They're all going to close. Oh, no. That's a, oh, they've been around well the future of retail. in bankruptcy. That's pretty good. All right. they're, yes, they're declaring bankruptcy. <laughs> I think that's the longest silence after a joke. <laughs> just gonna wait it out. Just gonna. You just, just, just got to double down. Camera, it's, John. It's so we can insert. No. It's so no. we can insert a no. laugh later. <laughs> Back to the shame girl. The shame girl. You saw how she grabbed Dick. She has no shame. She has no shame. She's, She's like a crab. She's just that. fucking Come pinching her. at him. Come here, Dick. What are, Money, please. One of the things I gotta say that I love about Reddit. Is Reddit is such a great machine for discovering the perfect joke about a situation <laughs> because there's this announcement of a headline and then if you're like eight hours late to that headline, you click on the comments, the top comment is the perfect comment. Yeah. Not that, even eight yeah. hours. Yeah, Maybe it's not even eight hour. hours. It's a distillation yeah. process it that the, stu the good stuff comes to the top and then you can just, just read the top crust and right. you're done. I like on the main page, on yeah. the main page it's like that. The uh, and, and for the... Scarelli going to jail. They said he had a seven-year sentence. The top comment was uh, the original sentence was only 14 days, but the judge increased it by 5,000%. I thought that's, that's, <laughs> that's a fucking perfect joke for that. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, no one is going to – he'll probably only do two years. Yeah. You know, yeah. like because of good behavior or what? Because he's a rich yeah. white dude. <laughs> and what, his charge wasn't because he raised the price of the yeah. medicine. It's like, didn't he defraud yeah. a bunch of investors or something? Yeah, well, it's that's what that, and that's what everyone was making comments about was that he's not going to jail because he screwed over poor people. He's going to jail because he screwed over rich people. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Hey, well, just, don't do either. Maybe just don't screw over people. Yeah. Be a good person. Be a good person. Yeah. Put just the Wu Tang good. album out. Hey, Bernie, could you just be a good person, please? White hat. <laughs> do you, so did, they gave away. They gave John a free hat at this fucking. Thing. I got two hats. You got two hats. Did you get a white hat and a black. Yeah, How I did got, you? Were you not supposed to take them? You went twice. No, you, you take them. I went twice. Oh, how many hats are they giving it? Those are expensive, aren't they? Yeah, but it was like, it was only a limited amount of people, so it was like a part of it there. Uh, there was like, the whole park So was you got two hats, even though it was limited. Look at you. you so yeah. you deprived someone else of a hat. <laughs> Literally, many, just, just started uh, with be a good person. Do you have They're here? at home. Can I have one? You want the white one? Sure. Go ahead. I'll let you borrow it. Excellent. Gus and I are in the same boat here, though. Borrow it we don't forever. give a shit. Because those promo hats, there's no way they're fitting us. Yeah, no, no. I, no it would be a that cowboy the hat thing. that sits like this on he my head. No, no, no. No, no. I have a giant head, and they had, like, they gave me one, and they're like, this is pretty big. Let's see if it fits you. I'm like, nope, give me the next biggest one. You have like, bigger one. Like, yeah. I actually, they both fit my head comfortably. I have, I have a, a big giant head, too. head. You do I think not. We have all, a big I have a huge you head. Do, you do not. Yeah. It's, lo it's long. It's long. You've this got a, you've way. got a baby head. No, no, I'll crush you with my head. Do you want to do a hat comparison? Sure. We could do it. I have a long head. It's not big this way, but it's big this way. His is bigger. You that's not a <laughs> measurement. <laughs> we use the, the precisely calibrated John fingers. John touching. But and that's how we came up it's, with it's inches. It's a good size, but it's not as, even as big as mine. It's a good size. Actually, has a tiny you. head. Yeah, yeah, she does. Little tiny head. Well, I, I remember that uh, Elise and I had the same hats for Eleven Little Roosters, those uh, Mountie hats. Yeah. And hers, you'd put it on and it would just like sink to her eyes and mine wouldn't even go over my head. It's the worst. I don't know. I'd rather have a hat like fit wrong the other way. Yeah. Than to have one that just sits on the top of your head. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. You're like, you're like some can... kind of stupid cowboy dog. You gotta yeah. have like a tree <laughs> under your uh, your chin to like hold it, keep it from Woody flying from away. Right. I'm freaking a little yeah. bit over there. She's over What's there. that? Yeah, Do you have a little head, Ashley? Eating a sandwich. Tiny little bit. Tiny yeah, a little, little bit. Like if I take she's my, got tiny, uh, a lot of like tiny little hands too. A hat, a hat, my hat off and put it on her. It's just like Broadcast. wobbling around like that. Broadcast yeah. is looking for measuring tape. Oh, for okay. measuring oh, there head. it is. <laughs> Oh, do we wow. have like? Is that a real? This is what we're gonna use. Okay, here we cool. go. Thank, thank, thank you. All right, look, John. Look at me. I'm such an asshole. Yeah, okay. All right, here you go. John, measure my head. Okay. 
Official we head need measurements. need to find out now. Any guesses? What? Uh, you're going like the wrong way. You're going centimeters. Right you're going the wrong way. Hold on. What? It's centimeters. Flip it. Oh, okay. It's not going to do anybody any good. Oh, we could do centimeters. You get more precision. You get yeah. more numbers, more precision. Oh. Yeah, we're doing centimeters. Shut up. <laughs> What's the purpose of this? I've never felt like a more beautiful fairy princess. <laughs> That's the correct response. <laughs> uh, 60. 60 inches? Centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> you got a five foot head. <laughs> I'm start measuring my dick. Now we got to bust out a fucking calculator. <laughs> sounds so 60 impressive. centimeters. 60. Do we care about the actual size? 60. Oh, <sighs> shit. Interesting. You have the same size head. Mr. Interesting. Bernie. Oh. Oh. I got, I got it. it. Also 60. 60. What? This is a fucking broken ass tape. Me measure measure Bernie. Just, measure Bernie. I'm, I'm stuck. <laughs> Here, I'll do Gone. it. You can, okay. Uh, oh, oh, shit. I can't believe that. All right, worked. just because it's fine. We're not breaking tables here, too. I'm gonna sit here delicately while I'm trying to sit delicately. I'm gonna try to make my head bigger. Oh, Bernie is 63. Look at that, dude. My head is officially bigger than your head, Gus. Wow. I have a gigantic head. You do have a gigantic head. I have God a gigantic damn, head. I think what we discovered is we all have gigantic, head, right, gigantic, gigantic heads. <laughs> so, how do you measure head size? So, six, what is, Alexa, what is 63 <laughs> centimeters? Where is there an Alexa? <laughs> this is one of my office, actually. <laughs> so, someone watching is very pissed off right now. All right. Listen, listen, tweet at us. I'm going to ask your Alexa. Then Alexa, you can... order 20 dildos. God damn it. <laughs> Let's not enter that part. We, Black. We just watch every... 23.6 inches. Yes. 23? 0.6 inches. It's almost two feet around my head. Yeah, you got a big old head. Yeah, big old head. I got a big head. It's your brain. I got a- it's my brain. I got two brains. You measured wrong. You measured wrong. No. Everybody calm down. Everybody calm Stop. down. I'm doing myself. You're gonna do yourself? Yeah, I'm gonna do myself. You're not, You're not allowed to do yourself. Oh, don't like forget to your, your mic, John. 65! No. no. You're also not doing it straight around. You're not doing it straight. You're not doing it straight. <laughs> wow. Come on. Let's not be so boring. Yeah, it's got you a lot of hair. Get it down. Like this guy, right? There. You're at exactly, you're at 61. Okay, 61. thank you. I needed that. 61 This centimeters. is really important. I mean, I've clearly, I've clearly won, so I think that's all that matters. Shut up. Is that winning or losing? What's that? I, it's, it's awful. I have to buy hats from a special store. What do they say about guys Is it a hat store? It's a, it's, it, I think showers? it's called Giant Head Hats. I think that's the name of the place. Wow, they're not like, yeah. they're not catering to your feelings <laughs> at all. I think I looked it up, I go, what hats for giant heads? Hey, fuckface, got a big head? <laughs> Buy our hats.com. Well, it's kind of like how, you know, like the surgery to uh, get your nose reduced is called rhinoplasty? Yeah. Like, rhino? <laughs> it's just like adding insult to injury for people who are insecure about things. Big head. Big head hats. Big head caps. That's what it's called. Big head caps? Yep. And every now and then I just order a couple and just have hats. My like my Dodgers hat is one of those flex fit, and there's some flex fit hats that I can wear. That's the reason why if I have a hat, like I used to have that rooster hat until Ryan Wyatt stole it. What or, happened? Did he take it? Take it? Yeah, but or I think I lost just... it after that. I think he gave oh. it back to me. But he did. He liked my hat a lot, so he stole it at a party one time. Oh. As a joke, but then he ended up with my hat. So I stole Joel's <laughs> watch once. Well, who's do you Joel's? Still, do you still have it? Did you really? Yeah, for like maybe three weeks. I accidentally stole Gavin's his wallet orange? one time. His orange one. I had it for like three weeks. It's a nice watch. Yeah. So Joel's super good at blackjack. Yeah. I think we might have talked about this before. I hope yeah. I can tell the story. And I sat with him in Las Vegas, and I watched him win the money in one fucking night to buy that watch. Yeah. It was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It was incredible. Man, I stole it. Man, you stole it. Then John Reisker stole it. Yeah. That's what I'm here to do. They got all kinds of hats. They got Velcro hats. I can get myself a 3XL Tarp hat. Is All right, the, Bubba, is we, that the we get it. Side you need. <laughs> I know. Do you What's need that? to order three XL? I don't. I don't know. I mean, I just get like I can't get. Oh, there's those flex fit caps are small, medium, and then large, extra large. And then if they're gonna make one, like they made that RVB vintage one, mm -hmm. I asked them to get me a double XL, and that'll fit me. That'll fit my my gigantic head. So. And then if I get that, like I said, if I get a hat, I wear it forever. That's why I've worn the da Dodgers hat for like a year now. Yeah. I'm not really. I'm a. I'm a Dodgers fan, but I'm not like a huge Dodgers fan. It's just like that's not a enough fucking, to wear the hat. Yeah, Bernie, to stop talking <laughs> about the Dodgers. Yeah, I can't ever stop. Uh, Utley, let's turns go. out it's actually Dodger, the YouTube star Dodger that you're a fan. That's of. That's exactly true. right. It was <laughs> fruition. I was trying to get her on our show. Yeah. <laughs> no, my uh, my older brother Steven used to call me Hot Dog Head when we were kids. <laughs> Hot Dog Head because I have I have a very long and narrow. Head. Oh, that. My shit. brother used to call me ET because yeah. he's got that like melon head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they were just called me Big Head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, but the people less, on you weren't creative. They were just like, creative. you just have a big head. You're just a big head. Um, man, so I, I, you know, we had a birthday party for me recently. I turned 40. It's no 
No surprise. I still can't believe you're forty. So uh, when you're when you're when you're a forty year old dude, the doctor starts doing new stuff to you that uh, they've never done in the past. So when you're forty, they have to check your prostate. I've have done you never, that. Never had your prostate. I've never check had before? my prostate checked before. Forty. How'd that worked out for you. It's the first time. And I thought, like, I thought about that Reddit thread that we read a long time ago, where that person discovered they really like prostate massage. Best <laughs> fucking yeah. thread ever. But yeah, I'm not that dude. No. No. No, I'm not that dude either. I was like, I, I, okay, some people are into this. I'm not one of them. It you was, didn't get any stimulation. You tried it once. It was uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. Maybe yeah. Yeah, there's two sphincters. <laughs> <laughs> there's two sphincters. There's the anus and the rectum. There's the one that that you can actually control, and then there's the one you really can't control. There's two. What? It's like a, okay. And so the one that you control, you can get that to loosen, but this one that's in the inside, you got to like coerce it. Gotcha. Yeah, so maybe so you just wasn't coerced. You weren't no, relaxed. It was, it, I, I, I tried to be relaxed, and no, you probably. Then it, I, I probably didn't. <laughs> it didn't. It did not work out. Mm. The, and the doctor, you know, the doctor's so casual about it. He's like, "All right, drop trial. Mm -hmm. All right, just go ahead and uh, bend over right there. Put your elbows on the table." I was like, "Oh God, this is it's, it's just." And, and then it was happening. And it was like, so it, they, it they, was they stick there. fingers in and feel around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He said, One he, finger, he said, they gonna go feel some, two fingers. He said, <laughs> "You're gonna feel some pressure. It's gonna feel like you're pressure. gonna need. You, it's gonna feel like you're gonna need to urinate." It did not feel like that. <laughs> I would, I would not feel, feel like, like that you need to poo. at all. Does it feel like you need to poop? Poop. What? 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 Poop. Poop. It, did poop. it did not feel like that to me. Yeah, but you have a little lash right there. Do you have, by the way? Do you have poop. glitter on your hands, Barb? Barb and I just did an interview. Do you have glitter on like your? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was messing around with some makeup earlier. Oh, were you? Okay. Because yeah. I was like, we were doing that interview, and I didn't want to bring it up on that camera. Yeah. But yeah. I was like, are your hands glittery? They okay. are. I'm a vampire. And we were sparkling in the sun. Mm -hmm. Barb and I was. Uh, not to completely talk about South by Southwest the whole time. South by Southwest. South by Southwest. Tap by tap. But uh, Barb and I, we, Sheila Lazar's in town, a yeah. uh, good friend of ours, and she always does these amazing like installations mm. in South by Southwest and does interviews. And she wanted us to come by, but she wanted us to come by literally an hour before this podcast starts. So we had to be downtown at four Yikes. and then here at five. So, yeah, between rush hour traffic and South by traffic, that's yeah. uh, that's risky. Yeah. It, the weird thing is, is like Uber's. Here is I can't, gotta stop using Uber, but Uber is super easy uh, to use because no one in South by uses cars. They just all walk around. Like all yeah. my drivers uh, this last week have all said, "Yeah, I'm not any more busy than I usually am," even though all these people are in town. Well, it's because uh, a lot of people in town for it are not local, so they're probably staying downtown. Exactly, or close to it. Yeah, and a lot of people around. who live in Austin are not going downtown this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Well. Before we get off South by completely, we should talk about how we premiered Bloodfest. You should talk about that. Absolutely, you should talk about that. Yeah, you were what? there. Bloodfest. What? Hey, is that a movie? How this guy get my huh. hat? This guy Derek Kingle on Twitter has my exact old hat. Oh, look at that. Maybe it's, he stole it. It was Matt gave it to me because it was it was that rooster hat. I didn't like that it said cock on it. I always hated that. And at one point, I was trying to figure out how to remove the stitches that say that, but I couldn't. Uh, but I can tell it's the same hat because he got it for me when he went to go visit his dad in Hawaii, and it has the Hawaiian Islands stitched on the side. So this guy has that exact hat. Did you steal my hat, you motherfucker? Derek? <laughs> Derek Klingle? Bloodfest. Barbara, talk about Bloodfest. Well, if you're, Bernie you're, doesn't get his hat back, it's gonna be a Bloodfest. Feature film debut of Barbara Dunkelman. Yeah. You were the there, Paramount my friend. Theater. My I friend was. John was there supporting me. Yeah. <clears throat> Your one and only friend, John. What happened? I supported my friend Barbara he by seeing there? her feature film debut. How would it go? I was not at the premiere, but I had a reason. Oh, I told aware. you why. I told you why. Thank you. Not good enough. It was a pretty gross. That's us on the stage. Look at them. Yeah, it was a, it was a midnighter. Uh, originally, it was supposed to premiere at uh, midnight at the State Theater, but because there was a uh, more people who wanted to see it, they actually got moved to the Paramount Theater, which is just next door that holds a lot more people. And also due to the delay, it started. A little later too, so I think the movie started playing around twelve forty-five at night Gore. and yep. finished at what tw like two fifteen, yep, ish. And then we did the Q and A after, so it was, uh, I was tired. It was a late night, but I was uh, tired. it was incredible being able to see the finished product with not only like my friends and people who worked on the movie, but other people who had no idea what it was about or anything about the movie it was really surreal. Um, the response was great; everyone was laughing and. Reacting crowd. to everything mm -hmm. appropriately. Uh, it's it's always interesting to see what people laugh at. Mm -hmm. I think that's always my favorite part of seeing anything with a crowd. Because it's like, you know what's going to happen, but people laugh at things that you don't expect them to laugh at. Right. And vice versa. Where it's like, well, no one laughed at that. I guess it wasn't that funny. Had you watched that cut of it to that point? I hadn't seen that cut of it. I also hadn't seen it as a full movie, so I had seen bits and pieces of that's it. That's fun. Um, I definitely saw a cut 
before Gus got cut. Hey, <laughs> Gus, you mean, you mean the best ago. cut? Gus was originally in it. The we're just, they're just going to make you an extra little short. Like, yeah. They'll just make the Gus part. But I think they were trying to make me feel better. They were like, yeah, yeah, we can film some more scenes with you and we can flesh it out and have like this whole other side story. I was like, don't, don't patronize me. Me and uh, me, Robbie, Jacob, and Seychelle, the, the cast of Bloodfest, were talking about how we were all bummed out that your stuff got cut and we really want them to take all your scenes and edit it into like a really emotional short movie <laughs> and put like make it black and white add some like french music to it can we say what your character was i think we've we've talked about it a bit so it's like a, a guy that just couldn't get in right, couldn't the get in. he's like outside yeah. trying trying to get in the whole time but i have a uh, that scene where uh, i think my first scene where i run into them in the parking lot yeah. and i give them like the double flip off and drive off yeah and i remember we, you know we filmed that and uh, they were they, uh, we filmed it. They said, just flip them off and drive off. And I did like a double flip off and drove off with my hands around the wheel. And then, you know, they all cut. They came over and like, hey, that was great. Uh, don't ever do that again. <laughs> we need you to keep your at least one hand on the wheel. Yeah. yeah. But didn't uh, they use that? Then they, that's, that's what was in the they, yeah. they ended up cutting it. It wasn't in the film, but that's yeah. what they did. That would have been the that cut. Been, that would have been the scene. But no, it was, um, it was so much fun. And then we had another screening the next night as well as uh, the South by Southwest party that we had for Bloodfest, which was... Awesome. We had like the pig butchers there and clowns and zombies and vampires and everything like that walking around. It was, I was I don't there. Know, just a very surreal experience. Yeah, Bernie was there. Bernie <laughs> came to the party. I came to the he party. He made an appearance. <laughs> oh, stop it. How dare you? How dare you? I had a thing where I was going to go to the premiere on Friday night, but <laughs> I don't know if I should talk about this. So I talked you know, about fingers up my butt. No, so go but ahead. it's not my thing. A friend of mine had an emergency where a uh, sewer pipe broke in their house. And that was gross. That's yeah. not fun. That was not fun. So I had to help with that. Oh, I just read it as a pipe burst. No, it was, you a, sent me those. It was a sewer pipe. Never mind. I read. I don't blame you for it not being a, there. What they can refer to as a gray water pipe. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was, I was, I was in emergency triage mode, helping that person out. But so. uh, but you saw the film. I did. I always am hesitant to like get feedback on anything because, of course, when your friends are seeing stuff that you're in, they're gonna be like, "You were great." Good job. Can't believe you memorized all those lines. No, one, no <laughs> one's gonna be like, "Oh, you were okay." Like, no one's gonna do that to your face. Mm -hmm. So it's always hard to know how it really was and what people really thought. So I'll have to wait till more people see it and I read reviews. Well, yeah, because it's it, limited audience has seen it. This very point. limited. Yeah. Well, I also, you know, uh, yeah, but the, you're in a unique position in that cast in particular because. The approach on Bloodfest was on Laser Team, and we talked about this. You weren't on the podcast when we talked about this, but mm -hmm. Laser Team, the idea was 50% of the cast, main cast, uh, came from the Rooster Teeth uh, internal cast, if, for lack of a better term. The other 50% came from people we cast from Hollywood, Colton and Allie. Well, I mean, and the main Alan, cast was, Alan. was U3 and Colton. So technically, it was born. Well, well, of the other yeah, main characters, like the oh. main characters, like you know. Kirk was had a part, and, sure. and right, Alan, but like Alan Richardson and Alan DeBerry. Allie. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, so that was the philosophy for that, and of course, we maintained that going through to Laser Team Two. Uh, for Bloodfest, it was we cast for the primary cast, primarily people from <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> And then you were you're the lone person. Uh, Nick Rutherford, who's been in some other stuff, was also in the primary cast. I would say, mm -hmm. uh, but you were the lone Rooster Teeth person mm -hmm. uh, in the cast. Yeah, I do think that um, Adam Ellis was probably the next level of person who had big true. part in it. Yeah. Well, it's not go. It's not, okay. He's on the poster. I just I said he's in the trailer. It. Yeah, he's in the trailer. But, well, but I know he's Let's, in the trailer mm -hmm. on the poster. But uh, <laughs> but I I think that Barb. I think that it's. For you, there's going to be people who are Rooster Teeth fans who see you as they know you really well, yeah. you know, and they know you as Barb, and so it's like Herb. you're going to need to look. Bimmy. You're going to need to even look a layer deeper at people who aren't familiar with Rooster Teeth at all when they start seeing the yeah. movie. Yeah. Well, I think it, it's it's hard, and I understand this mentality of of especially people who are fans um, who have been watching Rooster Teeth for a long time, especially people who watch the podcast are always open, who who know us so well as us. So it's hard to separate yeah. us as who they know us as. Our, our real selves versus a character we're trying to play. It's quite the balancing act. Yeah. I uh, I read, so, you know, we talked about this, uh, you know, like you said, with Laser Team and, of course, with, with Bloodfest as well. And I read a review that had a line that kind of addresses this, but I felt like they got the sentiment wrong. Yeah. They said, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, however, for those who don't know who supporting actress Barbara Dunkelman is or why it's funny that a group of gamers are stuck in a room, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you might get lost. Yeah, it's, it's like, weird when people project things that aren't right, in the like, movie. That, that, that you don't need any background to have understood. Well, there's no. The, I things. think the only reference to me being me is there's a time in the movie very early on where my character gets a phone call and uh, Yang's song from Ruby is playing. 
There's literally like no that, contextual that, value of, to your character that involves anything you've done at Rooster Exactly. Team. Like that is the yeah. only, and that's just a, a kind of like a um, nod. It's it's like it's a, a reward for people who get it, but it's not, we don't it's stop the moving. Yeah. Yeah. What's that song? It's just a, a ringtone on yeah. someone's phone. Right, right. Like no, but it is weird when people do project this kind of thing and then they say, well, I liked it. But uh, people who don't know who why Barbara's in it will wonder why Barbara's in it. No, they won't. They really won't ever right. wonder that. They'll just see a actress who's in the movie, you know? Yeah. Because they don't have the context of just Barbara like inside of Rooster Teeth. Saw a Quiet Place starring John Krasinski, and if you haven't seen The Office, you won't enjoy a Quiet Place at all. It just, <laughs> yeah. It's really the layers. Why is built. Jim? Yeah. What happened to Pam? <laughs> but see, you yeah. don't get Where's that Pam? if you don't watch The Office before seeing a Quiet Place. You know what happened? Pam talked. That's what, so she's dead. She got, she got <laughs> killed by the monster. Is it, is it monsters? It's in the, the second trailer, it looks like monsters. We should it's, it's a creature, it's a It's creature. in the trailer. It's oh, a yeah, that's true. Good? Oh, movie? It's very good. I'm yeah. very excited to see when it comes out in theaters now. Yeah. Have you guys seen the trailer for this movie called Hereditary? No. Yeah. Or something like that? Uh, I have never seen a trailer for a movie that I did not want to see more than that. It it looks so fucked up and dark to a point where I feel like I would feel queasy if I saw that movie. Yeah, really? I mean, I've seen multiple movies like that. Like uh, A Cure for Wellness had a pretty creepy trailer that I was like, I don't know if I want to watch this. I can't. I can't. I just can't. It makes me like my insides turn. Yeah. Did you see the trailer? For it? I don't think so. It doesn't. Sound uh, like it. Raw was another one. Oh yeah. It was like the the pseudo cannibalistic one. Um, it's like the French film, right? Yeah. And the the. Trailer was so unnerving. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip on this one." Everyone kept raving about the movie as like a total like art house like fave, but I'm like, "Nope." Also, Mother, I think, had a trailer like that too. Mother turned me off, and then I watched the movie, and I was like, "Wow, the trailer sells the movie terribly." I like the movie. A lot of people hate Mother. It's very polarized. Yeah, it's very, very polarizing. polarizing. But the trailer sells it terribly. There was another movie I saw recently where the trailer completely misrepresented the movie. Black Panther. Yes, what? that was it. Exactly. <laughs> like that, you know what you're getting with that. Annihilation, maybe. No. Black Panther no. cost a billion dollars worldwide. A Quiet Place's trailer sold me on the movie. Though. Dude, the first I saw the um, I had the exact same bar reaction Barbara did to Hereditary, <laughs> where I saw the first trailer for Quiet Place. I was like, I'm absolutely on board with this movie, and I don't want to see anything mm -hmm. else in regards to it. And I was kind of upset with myself for watching the second trailer. Yeah, I don't watch second trailers if I'm sold on the first. Yeah, trailer. right. It's like yeah, it's just it's marketing. So I'll even stop the first trailer if about a thirty seconds in or a minute in, I'm sold. I go, nope, don't want to see it anymore. Yeah, yeah but cool. then what if like at the thirty-one second mark, it's like all the shit you hate. Like that's when it all Maybe. pops up. But I go. I just like going to see movies. Yeah, so like if I'm sold movies. enough to go see it, I'll go see it. Yeah. I hate, I hate when movie trailers severely spoil movies, and, yeah. and no one's really talked about it. Uh, the trailer for Thor Ragnarok gives away like they show some of the biggest moments in that movie about in the trailer. Two thirds of the plot. Yeah. Don't you don't watch trailers though? Whenever, That's insane. Yeah. I watch the first teaser or the very first trailer, and. If it's a movie I'm sold on, I'll go see it, but I don't go see any more. Yeah, like, well, you bring headphones tonight. I do. Actually, to theaters. If, I've just recently upgraded to bring go headphones ahead. to theaters. What's this? Okay, so I used to when I go into movie theaters, if a like if I've already seen a trailer or if I or like or or if it's a movie that I know I'm gonna see, you will turn over and you will see me with my hands and my ears. He'll literally be like this. And I'll be like this. And I'll just be like, I'll like actually be pushing my my fingers in and out to like actually make there so there's like right. a, a difference in sound. And that's how I don't see anything in the trailer. Now I have headphones that I put in my ears, and I'm just like this during the trailers, just like waiting for the movie to you start. Playing yeah. music or yeah. You just have, okay. Just playing the music. The first time I ever was at a movie with you where you were doing I that, I was like, mad. are you okay? I like, look what's upset. wrong? <laughs> he just his arms are folded and he's like, Well, it's because I'm like this. I'm just that's like too much. this. That's too much, right? Not watching much. Anything. Just go to the snack bar. Walk out. Yeah. Go I thought in the huh? go on to the lobby. Well, you just can't like, be you can't be late now. There are some that I do want to watch though. Like, but if I like especially Especially if a Marvel film or or like a, like a big old blockbuster, that I know that I've already got my decision about it, and I don't want to see because those those blockbuster movies give away so much in the trailers now. Like I yeah. felt like in Black Panther, there was a moment in the trailer I wish they hadn't shown, which was in the trailer they show where like Killmonger also has the suit on, and like they they then they start fighting. It's yeah, like, that's every fucking Marvel movie. Well, like that would have been really cool to see like in the movie, like not knowing, and then he like activates it, and it's yeah. like oh, two Black Panthers uh, fighting agreed. each other. Like uh, and then agreed. it's like oh, you just kind of showed it. I, Speaking of which, did you see that tweet about? Uh, that girl who broke her oh retainer while watching Black Panther, and then no. Michael B. Jordan bought her a new Michael one. Michael B. Jordan is a gift to this world, man. So I guess like an orthodontist has a Tumblr page, and he wrote that. First of all, 
Let's talk about that. <laughs> An orthodontist has a Tumblr page. Why does page? a grown man with a professional career have a Tumblr I'm page? I'm 33 and I have a Tumblr page. You don't have a professional yeah, career. Yeah, but you're not an orthodontist no. either. I don't have a professional <laughs> career? No. What the fuck am I doing? You yeah, do social. You're entertainment. That's not a real job. I, I run our design the, department. The orthodontist wrote like uh, a post six saying years of that he had, school for that? he had a 17-year-old patient who came in because she snapped the metal in her retainer because she became so excited when Michael B. Jordan took his shirt off in Black Panther. <laughs> Bit through her retainer. And then, and, and then the girl tweeted a, a screenshot of that Tumblr post like, oh my god, that's my orthodontist. Uh, I'm the girl he's talking about. So Michael B. Jordan, you know, uh, tweeted like, oh, hey, let me know. Uh, I'll pay for your new retainer. That is, that is the cutest fucking thing it's ever. Fucking Look at cute. that boy. Oh, my god. Mean? Look at that big old boy. Yeah, he's like the perfect, I'm perfect human specimen in that movie. Jesus Christ. It's ridiculous. He was so good in that I movie. I don't know, man. Fucking the, ridiculous. the little pox on his skin, like, between... Him, like I know it's the character thing, but like Chadwick it's... and the guy who played in Baku, it's just too many giant thick boys in that. <laughs> I can't handle it. With two C's? Yeah, is that that's what I mean. And Baku about? is thick daddy. That's what he is, okay? <laughs> what? But yeah, what no, are these I, terms I'm trying to read the actual quote, but he said it was, he was laughing. The author was laughing. I, mean, I think he, I think he wrote was so that she was so thirsty. <laughs> so thirsty <laughs> that she broke a retainer. It's just so funny. Girl, so I feel funny. you. But now he follows, yeah, now he follows her on Twitter and is buying her a new yeah. retainer, paying for her new retainer. Uh, all all over the U.S., kids are now breaking retainers going to see these just movies. punching their mouths. It's, yeah. It was really fucking funny. I love, really funny. I love the internet for stuff like that. You know, it's just That's such amazing. a crazy story. And now... Mm-hmm. She's, you know, he's buying her a retainer. Yeah. He's got enough money. That's awesome. No, that's super cool. How much are retainers? This is funny. Oh, it's very funny. It's a, and it's a good story. 150, yeah. 200? I have no idea. The uh, retainer? Yeah. Probably like, I don't know. When I was a kid, that was a long time ago that I had a retainer. I think it was like, what's 150? the inflation rate? So it's probably, like, it's probably like 300 bucks for a retainer, maybe 400. Oh, let, let us know using They're different RT now, podcast. though, too. They're different. They're more like, uh, uh, JD's got a retainer that's more like an Invisalign tray, but he, mm. he hasn't. Lost his, so we haven't had to pay to replace it. So I don't really know what it costs. It was part of the treatment to get a retainer. I wish in my life, if you ever get braces and they offer to put the permanent retainer in, do it. It's you don't want to keep up with that shit. I still have it in. You still have your permanent retainer in? Uh, I, I will. I will forever. Yeah, I think my teeth have moved. They're still fine, but they've moved. Yeah, mine moved too. You, did you finish with your? Um... I did, and I got a series of refinement trays, so mm. they're they're fixing some of my teeth still. Did you feel it was worth it? No, really. No, I wouldn't recommend it. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm big about that. It's like if you do a lot of times people will do stuff and because they've done it They they feel like they have to recommend it. I just was no it wasn't worth a year of my time I had ha- wearing those fucking trays to not have it be perfect when it was done I yeah. had braces for six years. Did you I got them at the beginning of junior high did not take them out until my mom Begged my orthodontist to take them out for my senior photos at the end of the year. I mean you got great teeth. Thank you. Yeah. Six years but of work. Six years. Yeah. yeah. So what, what were your teeth like before? They were they were pretty messed up. And because of like my development story just always being okay. terrible, um, I even had some baby teeth still in mm. wow. when I went into junior high. Wow. That they had to remove and then the teeth still wouldn't come down. So they had to attach braces to pull the teeth down. Oh, oh I didn't know you God. could do that. That's a thing. So yeah. So I not only did I look like a nine year old in high school because I didn't go through puberty, I also had braces. All of junior high and high school. So. I had braces. I had the looking. shortest amount of time I think I've ever known anyone to have braces. I had braces like 14 months. Patrick, how long do you have yours? Is Patrick here? I had mine for uh, 11 months. 11 oh. months. Oh, there you go. He beat 11 me 11 months. months. Yeah, me. It wasn't long at all. Like, it, in fact, uh, oh, but you had him when As you were an adult, adult right? Yeah, yeah, he had him recently. Like, like they told me the the, that when I did the Invisalign stuff, they said, well, we can give you braces. And braces, you know, get like the actual metal braces. It'll take six or seven months to do it, or you can just do it where no one will notice that you have them, and it'll take a year. It'll take 12 months. And I was like, well, yeah, I'll do the 12 months instead of having braces for six months because I didn't know if, like, getting cast in something. You had on-camera stuff, right? Exactly right. Yeah. And it's like now looking back, I'm like, yeah, I wish I'd have done the fucking metal braces. For six or seven months. Yeah. Well, yeah. you also never know. Like, looking back, you're like, oh, oh, no. Yeah. Uh, let me read this thing here. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace offers beautiful, award-winning designer templates, which you can use to create your own beautiful website or online store. It's an all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. They've also made it easy to set up or transfer your domain on Squarespace. Instead of working with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence, you're able to manage all your domain and building settings with Squarespace and take advantage of their easy-to-use DNS interface. It's never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to manage your products, orders, and inventory easily. 
Squarespace can also provide you with a comprehensive set of marketing tools to engage with your audience, get found across search and social, and grow your following. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com. Go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth to get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. And as you know, we've been asking some of you to share your Squarespace creative websites. We've gone through and picked some of our favorites. Uh, as a reminder, with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this. Be sure to tweet at us with hashtag RT Squarespace. And we've got a few of our favorites. Oh, are they up on the screen already? Yeah. Uh, so the first one we showed was, uh, was it Brendan Stephens Photography? Then we had uh, Corey Mater's LX2 photography. And this last one here on the screen is from Chris Espinosa. So thank you for sharing your sites. You can, that's the power of Squarespace. You too can make a, a website just like that. Well, not just like it. You too can make a website. Same quality. Uh, so thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Uh, so according to John Oak here on Twitter, in Ohio, it's about $300 for a retainer. Okay. $300, that sounds about right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so Chunk, according so no, to no Ali small Bird, investment by Mr. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Ali Bird 27 says between 200 and 300 dollars. So it seems about somewhere in that range. It's seriously one of the funniest stories I've ever heard. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I wish funny. I could be in that theater when that happened. Just to hear the sound. <laughs> <laughs> Shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, wow, that sounds like it was right in the oh, room I with feel me. I broke my retainer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it must have been so fucking funny. Explain that to her parents, you know? She'd have to go through and explain it. Or even explain it to the orthodontist, you know? Yeah. I mean, he's a cool orthodontist, clearly. He's she got also a fucking basically Tumblr account. sat through another hour of the movie with a broken retainer. Why wouldn't yeah. you? I mean, what are you gonna do? You well, I'm saying that's like, because he takes his shirt off at, at best halfway through the movie. Mm -hmm. And so she had a whole another half of the movie that she just sat there. Mm-hmm. The movie, such, that such movie a fucking still cool number one, four weeks in the four weekends at the box it's office, number one. Movie. This is the crazy thing. Who owns number two? I know, Disney. Disney. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Wrinkle in Time. They're just so easily. right now, Disney has number one and number two at the box office. I was just telling you last night that I read an article a while back that last year, 2017, Disney owned 26% of the market share of movies, of, of box office sales. Of sales. Of 2017. And that's before they bought Fox and all of those entities. That's fucking crazy. How are they allowed to do that? I don't know. Just keep buying shit. <laughs> I know. It's it's crazy. Well, like Time Time Warner and the AT&T, that merger's going before Congress now, right? Or right. Going, they're going to court, officially going to court. Are they? It's okay. like, is that just AT&T that can't buy stuff? Is that what the, the deal? Is that what's going on? That should be clear, too, also. But can, like, with, we are invested in by AT&T, you know, so it's yes. one of those disclosure things. I should absolutely say that. But no, I'm just wondering. It's like AT&T went through divestiture in 1982 where they broke the company apart. I don't think they've ever done that to any other company as far as I know, before yeah. or since. Do you remember when, they, when everyone was yelling at Microsoft for having the monopoly on the market and everything like that? Did anything ever happen? For what? Like there was a while yeah. uh, when Microsoft was being accused. Yeah, got close. Of, of having a monopoly. You know what happened? Apple got huge. And so that well, was... I think what, so what, what happened, there, there was a core technology that was changed. So what, what Microsoft was doing at the time, I don't know if you remember this, was Explorer, for you to browse your files on your desktop, was Internet Explorer. So there was not only a web browser, but it was how you browsed your local files. Okay. So then they ended up breaking it to two separate things, where it's Internet Explorer and Explorer for your files, and also... I think Internet Explorer was not like put on the desktop by default or something. Mm. Which is funny because now when I, I use Chrome primarily for my browser, and I just type what I want to Google search in the address bar. So it's yeah. like all integrated into one thing. I love the thing that the only thing anybody ever uses Internet Explorer for is to find the install button for Chrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like the, one, the only thing that's ever typed in Internet Explorer for me is Download Chrome. Yeah. Well, yeah, but there, there is though. Whenever we talk about this, there'll be people saying, "Stop fucking using Chrome." Apparently now, browsers go back and forth. What's wrong with Chrome now? Actually, I a memory bloat and everything yeah, else. It's just, I looked yeah. up just out of curiosity because I was having some weird issues with my computer, like with my browser, and I was like, "Is there?" Because I was having like a weird issue with streaming something. I was like, "Is there a better uh, browser to stream?" I think it was even Netflix. And I looked up and I found an article that said the best browser to stream Netflix through was Internet Explorer. Yeah, you can get higher resolution and better. Oh, or Edge. Yeah. You mean Microsoft Edge? Edge. Edge. That's yeah. what it was. Microsoft yeah. Edge. Yeah. What and I was like, the, really? Safari in compared to all this. There's Safari. Lower. No, Safari's all right for a streaming. I, I think. Safari, my well, iPhone. they were all like all right, but it was like for some reason Edge, Edge. was the best. Yeah. Interesting. I'm weird. Like I use Safari on my iPhone, but I hate it on a desktop. I use it on my my laptop because I recently got a new laptop, like within the last six months or so. Yeah. And I just never changed 
the default. I never download another web browser. I was just lazy, so I'm just using Safari on it. Not? I don't, if it works, I don't it gives notice a shit. the fucking difference so, at all. Uh, according yeah. to Netflix, if you're streaming content in your browser, Google Chrome supports up to 720p. Yeah, that's what it was. Internet Explorer 1080, Microsoft Edge 1080. Oh, this article's from 2016. Let me find something more okay. recent. They gotta break up Netflix. That's who they should break up. Yeah, that's, they got a monopoly. <laughs> too much. Do it. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, you get. You have enough. Stop it. It has nothing to do with them being a competitor. But yeah, that should be broken up. Okay. Sure. So according to the Netflix help page, Google Chrome is 720p on Windows, Mac, and Linux, 1080p on Chrome OS. Internet Explorer is 1080p. Microsoft Edge is up to 4K. Firefox is up to 720p. Opera is up to 720p. Opera. Safari is up to 1080p. Some dude. On Mac like, OS 10.10. 10. So that's what of it was. Our audience Edge. Went, Woo, Opera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Servers just started booting up because someone said on the internet. <laughs> yeah. So Edge is the only one that can do 4K. Edge is the only one that can do 4K. Talking about Chrome, uh, it's one of my favorite things about having. So I have an uh, uh, Android phone. I have a Pixel, and that whenever you're on your iPhone, even if you use Chrome on your iPhone, if you have like Siri look up anything or anything like that, she pulls up Safari. Yeah. So I love that it's it's the Chrome is completely integrated into the entire everything. Like even when I, I ask it to look up something like using OK. Well, it's Google. a Google phone. I know. I'm saying I like it's, it. It's a Google browser. Hey, Bernie, can I like my phone? Do you, I mean, it's surprisingly the Apple, about phone liking uses the Apple on browser. It's the yeah. same thing. You just like. <laughs> on this on this house, we talk about hating phones. That's what we In do. this house. We <laughs> yeah, we, we're all <laughs> iPhone users and we're all miserable, John. <laughs> we're all miserable. Not me. Now, I was going to ask how you like it because you, love... you were an iPhone user. Yeah, I swapped. Uh, my phone was was just breaking my old iPhone right before I was about to go on a trip to London. Yeah. And so I made the switch and I've been using the Pixel 2 since December. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly amazed. I love it. I got I am constantly amazed. I was even started talking I, so that you could, I knew Barbara yeah, was yeah. going to pick it up. That's, that's good teamwork. I started talking. I was waiting for you so to, the, yeah. The camera went away. <laughs> and then John and now says, do I, now have I, I don't care. Right. I have a booger. Just always tell me if I have a booger. Just please do me a favor. I wait for the camera switch and then do one of these. How that pop? Well, I don't care. I have no shame about so that. Everyone, everyone has boogers. Uh, I appreciate that. What the fuck was I just going to say? We're just talking about You started and then the booger derailed it. Oh, I'm always amazed that when I get in a car, whenever I'm doing a lot of ride sharing this week, and so a lot of people who drive professionally tend to have newer cars. I'm constantly amazed that cars that are still coming out in 2018 have their own proprietary GPS system. Oh, God. It seems like that's such a pain in the ass, and they're never as good as Google Maps. Just fucking use Google Maps. Yeah. yeah. It must be a licensing thing, but holy God. Well, there's also like a, especially in recent years, people like uh, laws trying to get people to stop using their phone in their car. Mm -hmm. So maybe they feel like if you put in the but GPS if you haven't mounted. System, but yeah, it's if you integrated. haven't mounted, it's fine. Yeah. And that's how I see most right they're, people. The they're offering you Kleenex if you want it, John. I think he's okay. No, he's good. Yeah, you're fine. He's fine. So yeah, when I I, I took a, a I'm ride share I'm yesterday, good. I'm good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Stop doing coke. I took a ride share yesterday after meeting with uh, Sadiq Khan, and uh, I got into the to the ride, and uh, the guy starts that. driving, and he goes, "Oh, I remember you. I gave you a ride before." Oh, really? and I looked at him again. I was like. Oh, right. He was the guy who, like, gave me a ride to the Gus's birthday party for Live Week. Oh, yeah? I was like, oh, right. I remember you. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you live over at that place. Like, it's bound yeah. to happen. Yeah, I was like, he probably sees so many people. Yeah. How does he remember me specifically? You're a very distinct looking human. You saying ugly? No. Very Jordan handsome. Carlson pointed out that the U.S. also broke up Standard Oil in 1911. There you go. Oh. That's another case for it. I was well. also going to mention, I don't know if you noticed this in our Uber today when we were taking the, the car downtown. Mm-hmm. The driver was texting. No, I couldn't see that. Yeah, there was like he stopped at one point, but I was gonna leave over and be like, "Hey, not to be rude or anything, but you're not supposed report to report that so shit. Legal. Can't you report it in app? Did I? Did you say that? I missed when you said that. No, I didn't say it because he stopped. Oh, By the time it. I was about to say something, he had stopped. But he was doing it for like quite a bit. Yeah, no, that you should absolutely say something. He's endangering us. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about my deaf Uber driver that I had from the airport one time? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear about that. Um, I. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go just ahead. Take a moment for Bernie to process what he just said. Um, no, I was I, I landed at the airport, and so I was getting a, a, a Uber home. And um, when I got matched with my driver, they texted me immediately and said they were on my way. They'd be there soon. And I don't normally get a text from the drivers. I thought that was odd, but he showed up and he got out. And that's when 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 I when he introduced himself, I found out he was deaf. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Uh, and got in the car. That was fine until. He pulled out a giant iPad that he started typing into to talk to me oh, about like, yeah. hey, we're going to get ready to go. Uh, we'll be there in 15 minutes. I was like, thanks. And then that's all the information you need, by the way. That, right. Like, then the we started the driving 
And about and driving out of the airport, he pulls this giant iPad up again in front of himself and starts typing no, into no, it while no. he's driving to tell me another message of like, I think that was when he was going to give me an ETA of us, and he like said, gave it to me, and I was like, okay, please stop doing that. I'd have been like, no more. Yeah. Please watch the road. He was just trying to be courteous that, and he's yeah. trying to communicate well, and understand like, that, but he was doing it in a way that was like yeah. making me un- nervous about driving. Anytime starts typing anything while they're driving, it's dangerous. Uh, Riot one time told me when she was driving with me that anytime she finally like told me, it's like she turned to me at one point, she's like, John, I love you very much, but if you don't keep both hands on the steering wheel, you're giving me anxiety attacks every single time we're driving. Because yeah. I drive with one hand and that kind of thing. Um, or like even like one hand, you ever like switch to like a leg for just a second to like adjust something and then go back? Yeah, like, I've done that, and that was, and apparently that like right. worried her to no end because she doesn't drive very much. Yeah, and so I so whenever I'm with her, I have to have both well, hands. That's nice that you're doing that for her. Well, yeah, I don't want to give my girlfriend an anxiety like panic attack. In I, the always, car. I always do the thing where if someone's driving me in there, they're on their phone or doing something. I always go, "Do you want me to? Do you want me to look something up for you? You want me to?" You want me to help you out there? Right. And whenever they go, no, it's okay. And they keep doing it, I go, stop using your phone while you're driving me, please. Please, yeah. It's yeah. like, it's one thing if you're doing it by yourself, which you shouldn't be doing anyways, but right. like, my life is now in danger because you can't yeah. stop there's a, texting someone. There's a, when I was in New Zealand a co- uh, last month, they have television ads, like, discouraging people from doing that. And <laughs> I think the, in the car. They had a really, really great premise for the ad where, like, the driver puts down their phone, like, in the center console. And any time the passenger sees that the driver's eyeing it and going to reach for it, the passenger puts their hand out over the phone. So the to driver, hold like, hand. holds their hand. Yeah. So it's, like, just turning that situation to, like, this awkward moment. And you're still, like, defending them or keeping them from using the phone. Yeah. yeah. I, thought yeah. I, would, I thought it was, like, that's a really great approach to take. It's mm-hmm. a problem. I mean, it's, you know, it's... A phone is way more distracting than anything else that's ever been in a car before. You know? Yeah. I mean, there were some people I've seen going down the road where they have TVs installed in their car. That's fucking lunacy in my opinion. I'm not talking in the back seat. I'm talking in the front seat. Yep. It's, that's nuts. The guy, who, uh, the guy who wrecked his Tesla in autonomous mode and died, uh, which everyone was using as things, oh, these things are dangerous, see? I think, wait, wasn't he watching like something on a I tablet? he was I watching so. something, yeah. Yeah, and that's crazy. And that's he didn't crazy. stop in time or something, or he didn't... I mean, if, even if you're not concerned about safety, it's very illegal, and they can track when your your phone can give you up pretty easily. And yeah, say, yeah, they were doing this at this time, which is kind of scary to begin with, but it's the world we live in now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, before we get too far away from Microsoft stuff, um, the I read this great story that for some reason I don't remember this from internet lore, and it was a guy in 2002 who was trying to check his Hotmail oh, on that. Christmas Eve. Yeah. And he couldn't check his Hotmail account because he got errors for the domain Hotmail, or it was maybe one of maybe one of their passport, their subsidiary ones, and uh, he couldn't get it. And then he looked it up, and Microsoft had let the domain lapse and hadn't paid the bill on it. And so normally the way you'd think that story would end was he bought the domain, but no, he just busted out his credit card and paid Microsoft's bill for them so that he could check his email. And then posted about it that he paid Microsoft's uh, bill so they could, the domain would be reactivated. To me, that's like one of the funniest stories ever. It's like this good Samaritan goes out and like pays like eighteen bucks for the next year. <laughs> yeah, for um, I got this one for you, Microsoft. <laughs> Don't worry. The about nice it. end wow. of that story would be that Microsoft heard that he did that for them. Or whatever the company did, and then like rewarded him. Somehow. Yeah, they did something. They I don't did something. I don't remember what it was, but I remember that they did reward. Yeah. They gave him something nice okay. as a result of it. We gave Microsoft Edge for free. Yeah. <laughs> he gave him a Windows phone. Yeah, Windows phone. Actually, when I first met her, she was using a Windows phone. She actually liked the Windows phone. I don't phone. think I've ever met her. One time I saw someone. Well, she worked for Microsoft. Yeah, I was right, going to yeah. say, I, I was I was up at the domain and someone recognized me. Like, oh, can we take a photo? I was like, sure, I take a photo with them. And they bust out uh, uh, a Windows phone. They take a photo. And I go, hey, Windows phone, huh? I've never seen anyone using one of those that wasn't a Microsoft employee. And he goes, yeah, I, I, I work for Microsoft. <laughs> I was like, okay, that, that makes sense. The only Naturally. people have them. Naturally. Do you guys have the 10 at all? Uh, I do. Yeah. iPhone 10? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Is it good? I love it. It's, great. It, it's saved. I was ready to, I was ready to bolt. I was ready to bolt. Although I think Gavin's gonna move over. He's, you think so? He's, he's yeah. got a toe in the water. He's good, he does. He's testing What's the it. toe in the water? I have another friend who His did that too. Probably uh, with if you message him, he's green now. I'm green. Well, John yeah, is. that's why I don't message you. I remember, I thought that you just like didn't have Among other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> be fair, be fair about it. Sorry, John. So I, I do want to hear- I message you all the time, John. I message you more than you message me. I, I'll play Bullshit. this- Bullshit! I'll play this game. There's an easy way to prove- The last three conversations we had, let's see who initiated. 
Oh, so this is he knows that he started the last three then. No. I don't know that. There's no way. I just selected three conversations. I don't random... know that. Uh, I through? literally have the last text that I sent you <laughs> was me uh, <laughs> texting you about Ready Player One and you didn't reply. That was Sunday. Hey, John, I'd love to hear about Ready Player One. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's Ashley. Where's Ashley? Is she around? Let me text her. Are you over there, Ashley? I see someone walking. That's not, That's Ashley. not Ashley. Did you guys did you guys do the uh, no podcast about it? No, we did not. Okay, I'll grab you. you can start talking, up. John. Ooh. So, uh, for, like, is there any disclosure? Like, we weren't paid or anything. Like, you no. just went to a party or something. Like, how did How did you end up watching it? Went to the. They did the premiere at South by. Oh, so it was like I thought. Yeah, it was like, there's, there's been I thought reviews. it was like a secret one. No, or like, there, well, it was. They had a TBA movie on the South by schedule that did not get released to what it was until Saturday, and they announced it was ready for mm. the one. Oh, premiere. so it was a surprise. Yeah, it was a surprise. Okay. Um, and yeah, like. I saw Spielberg that you and, saw Spielberg. Spielberg was in the room. Oh, that's so cool. Like, that's one of my, like, all-time heroes. And the, uh, he was, like, maybe 20 feet from me, and he was talking about his movie, and it was that fucking awesome. So how, so how was cool. it? How, how, how long was it? Do you remember? Well, it was two hours to get in. Huh? It was two hours to get in, which <laughs> added a significant amount. And you only complained about the line maybe six times in the line. Listen, I had, listen, <laughs> I... I was he actually needed it. to understand that I was actually making a needed, actually needed huge sacrifice. A huge, on her behalf oh my god! That I was making. Ready Player You're One is such a two hours and twenty minutes. Long. Two hours and twenty minutes doesn't feel like two hours and twenty minutes, dude. Totally does not. Um, we even had a technical problem during the movie. Yeah. But, oh, we that was actually one of the best things. Yeah, I, oh, it, was, <laughs> it, it yeah. actually made the experience, I think, special in a way because uh, there's a point at the end of the movie and the big climactic ending that any movie like this would have that a big moment happens and when that moment happened the audio cut out but it was a moment in a movie that sometimes you know they, they cut out audio to make it dramatic mm -hmm. actually in the edit and so that lasted for about two seconds where everyone was like in awe of this quiet wow, moment look at this but then the camera shifted to something that looked like there should be audio and then it shifted to a shot of literally a boom box that was supposed to be playing music and we're all like Oh, uh, and yeah, so no audio. it finally went to like one more cut to another camera and then it paused. And so they clearly had a technical problem. They came out, they said, we're trying to figure this out, bear with us. Like a minute goes by, they rewind it, play the exact same scene again, moment happens, audio cuts out again. And we're all like, oh my gosh. Same exact moment. Same exact moment. They pause it again. It was like a sound cue, mm -hmm. and like the speaker system couldn't handle that sound cue. Yeah, gotcha. very clearly a sound cue. And at that point, we're, like some of us who like like were thinking, like, is it like a problem with like the export or something? Mm -hmm. Like at that point, yeah, yeah, is yeah, it because it happened the exact yeah. same spot? So then, like a couple more minutes went by. They rewind it again. At this point, was the third time I was watching this scene. Everyone in the audience is already pumped because the movie is a pretty good pump up movie. Well, the audience was an amazing audience. It was very. Well, a fan I imagine everyone it, there was very. It was much a, a fanboy fan. audience. It definitely was. Um, and so the so that you know we're watching like the thir the twenty seconds we've seen three times now happen, and then the moment occurs and we hear sound, and the audience just goes nuts. <laughs> I mean, it was because crazy. it also was really well timed because it literally is the start of a big battle at the end, and there's like you know there's just crazy things happening, so everyone's just screaming over this moment on the screen. So it was like a fun experience, and it was it was such a fun audience. The second time it happened, and that this moment comes, the sound cue happens and cuts out the audio. Uh, then it goes silent. We saw like the next three or four shots. Everybody's like, you know, at the first time, like, well, when they realized, they're like, stop the movie, stop the movie. And you hear people saying that. The second time through, because there's this battle thing that John's talking about, the audience was going like, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> making their own they sound effects. making these sound effects. It was pretty fucking funny. It I was pretty admit. good. It was a very good audience. Because uh, they had the whole cast there too. So I thought you were going to say like the cast came out on microphone and just like recreated no. the dialogue. No, yeah. I've, listen, I, it, I have been. At many screenings where we were showing something for the first mm -hmm. fucking time, and there's a technical problem. The first movie I ever made when we had our first ever screening of it, it took them 40 minutes to figure out how to play the thing. It just kept quitting on them. <sighs> and they were like, they, they, and it was a sound thing too. And they said, well, we're just gonna send everybody home. And I remember Matt was like, we were in college, it's like 20 years ago. Matt was like, Pe people came from like out of state for this one screening, like yeah. family and stuff like that. It's like, no, you're going to get this, you're going to fix this. Yeah. And it's like, oh, after 40 minutes, like, oh, this cable is in the wrong place. That was it. So, it's, it, but it's, it is mortifying. Was, was that it, happens. Yeah. Absolutely mortifying. Was it the Dolby? It was fucking Dolby. <laughs> fucking Dolby. <laughs> Dolby Theater. Piece of shit. Rest in peace. Are they Fox. gone? They're gone now? Yeah. Gone. Oh, they've been gone for a long time. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I think the last movie I saw there might have been like Amelie or something. Really? I did not have to sit behind the pillar. <laughs> or in the yeah, fucking bat room. There were, uh, there were no technical but, issues for the Bloodfest screening, but I think they cut it 
early during the credits, which is unfortunate because a lot of people at the premiere screening were people who worked on the movie who right. like, wanted yeah. to see their name in the okay. credits. That. Um, that's because there was a delay. I think it's because it was going so late that yeah, they, they, they wanted to get the Q and A. But it was still like, oh man, like that sucks. Like all it's kind of a festival here. thing that happens though with Q and A and stuff like that. Yeah. It's also kind of a thing. I learned this when Matt worked in L A. in Hollywood. He was on visual effects movies, and he was like on this. Uh, uh, like a like a Sylvester Stallone movie. He worked it was one of the movies he worked on and then I saw in the news Hey the premiere for the uh, Sylvester Stallone movie is tonight and Sylvester Stallone's gonna be there and this person's gonna be there And I was like I called Matt. And I was like cool. You're going to you're going to a movie premiere tonight. That's badass He goes, I'm not going to a movie premiere. I, think of the, I don't get invited to that. I go, but you worked on the movie You're like one of the lead visual effects people in this movie. He's like that's not the way that works because they're not at all We had a cast and crew screening and it's like it makes Sense now that I know how many people worked on a movie that that's the case, but that's that sucks yeah. You know what I mean? It's like that there's a premiere and not everybody gets to go to it that worked on the fucking thing That's yeah. that's crazy, but it's just a limited seating thing. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, I mean it's, the Paramount's a pretty big theater But if everybody but again, who worked on the movie was there for like a movie like Ready Player One We wouldn't know what else would see. No, yeah. no one else could see if so it was if I, yeah. Like if for a blood fest, I would have shown up and they'd be like, no, you can't come in. Yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> 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 Locked you outside. Well, I mean we got moved to the Paramount so you could come. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how people who get cut from the movie find out they're yeah. not in it. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, you're watching <laughs> it Could you what if like if you were watching the movie and like didn't see your scenes and that's how you found out you got cut Would you have been more pissed or less pissed? Probably more. Oh, okay. <laughs> I appreciate knowing ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got cut out of that James Franco movie. We shot oh, for like yeah. two days. Wait, do, but weren't you still in it? Like just no speaking lines. Super, super brief. Like, yeah, yeah. like, like a shot or two yeah. shots. Yeah, yeah. But it was like I was surprised at how much that movie. Even when we made it, um, like the two days I was on set was they shot with some actors. Like there's these twins that were I was next to, and I was this thing where they they were sitting next to me on the couch, and they were going at it, had all this banter and everything. They were fucking hilarious, and I thought, oh, these are like major characters in the movie because I didn't have the whole script. I just had the days we were there. Yeah. And then I watched the movie, and it's like, they're literally only in that scene as well. And as much cool, funny stuff as they did, probably a 20th of it made it into the movie. It was crazy. It's just the way it works. Such a shame. Yep. Some people shoot like that. They just shoot, like, tons and tons of stuff. Yeah. And then just find out what the movie is in the editing bay. I was watching, I went to the Director and the Jedi documentary today, um, this morning. It was the Ryan Johnson? Uh, direct this doc documentary on Last Jedi with oh, Ryan Johnson and everything. You know, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing, by the way. Yeah, they they premiered that. It's it'll it's I think it's going to be on the DVD as well when mm. that premieres, that kind of thing. Um, it's coming soon, I think. Yeah, it's very soon. Uh, but well, they gave out a lot of information in the doc. That movie shot for a hundred and twenty plus days. Fuck. And, and had like a hundred and twenty, hundred forty sets that wow. they made for it. Um, like the scale, like that's a big part of the documentary is showing the scale of that movie, and it's pretty awesome to watch. Um, I, th I think even if you weren't a fan of The Last Jedi, which there's a lot of people who are not fans of The Last Jedi, um, you'd still enjoy the doc and, and the way they talk about the process. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty good, like film process doc. And then also, like, they give a lot of moments for you to, you know, hear from people like Carrie Fisher and, and Adam Driver and all these main actors and everybody that worked on the project. Mark Hamill's a big mm -hmm. part of it. Mar Ryan Johnson and Mark Hamill were there this morning at the the doc premiere. Um, what is the most disliked Star Wars movie? Which sounds so strange. To episode say. one. Is it episode one? I would. I Jedi would was so. pretty or Probably, last. Jedi I guess was, yeah, episode one because of the expectations. You mean lot. disliked yeah. now or I disliked just, when it just came overall, out? Overall, what's your what's your gut reaction to that question? I would uh, say episode one. Yeah, I think I. Th either one or two. But yeah, but people. Yeah, the interesting thing is that people have a strong reaction to one. But then when you mentioned two Attack of the Clones to people, they're just like, eh. I mean, well, it's because like they, they removed a lot of Jar Jar. Yeah. It's like Jar Jar is just so fucking grating on you. And then I think they realized how bad they had fucked it up and they couldn't get rid of him. So they're like, they, they try to mitigate that. So you're still left with a movie you don't like, but it's yeah. not like aggressively in your face. Mm -hmm. uh, my buddy, uh, Mikey Newman, who runs the YouTube channel Film Joy, he's been doing a lot more curriculum based kind of videos for his video essays and he did one recently where he went through two two part video where he went through and did research into how every single Star Wars movie was received when it came out. And so he did research into the reviews that were released when it came out and how the audience reacted and went all the way back to New Hope and all that and went through every single movie all the way to The Last Jedi. It was really interesting to, to like contextualize in the moment how people react right. to the movies because we all have our opinions now on the far end of Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting to see, like, 
you know, when Return of the Jedi came out, yeah. you know, plus, what the people in actual uh, uh, editorials say. Yeah. Plus also my reaction is like, oh, I'm going to look it up on Rotten Tomatoes and see what it is. But that's, that's yeah. prejudicial. It's ongoing. If, yeah, if, if a movie came out before Rotten Tomatoes existed, then your your scores are going to be off. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that with Twitter, is that people who were famous in the early 2000s, we were talking about that. Yeah, it's just like a timing thing. Like if somebody had had their Twitter account then, they'd have millions and millions of followers because Twitter just didn't exist and they started like eight years after that. They have, you know, like not, way less than somebody not as who's... Many as they yeah, should. way less than somebody. Like the like I think about like the Survivor cast of mm. the first season. They mm -hmm. were this incredible phenomenon. Right. And it's like if Twitter had existed then, they'd all have millions of followers even probably to this day because people don't tend to drop off you that You should stuff. look at the follower count for people who are like on The Bachelor. Yeah. It's yeah. absurd. It is yeah. nuts. high, absurd, yeah. very high. Yeah, like really Twitter and Instagram, yeah. it's like that's people like people watch that show. Oh yeah, a lot. A very, uh, I mean, a lot of people watch that. You, show. you know what? Gus will sometimes ask questions that make me realize, oh, that's right, Gus is not on Instagram. Good for you, buddy. I'm you on are Instagram. on Instagram. He's on Instagram. Yeah. Are you? He is now. Yeah. When did you get on Instagram? A couple months ago. I, what did you G say? G Sorola. G Sorola, go follow him. I didn't know that. I, I got some. I got some some bitch in New Zealand pictures. You do. I would say. I would guess that Gus follows you. Just no, I don't follow anyone. You don't follow me. I either. follow Esther and Scrappy the dog. You follow oh, Scrappy love, the dog. I love Scrappy. Dog. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm I love. I fucking love Scrappy the dog. Have you met Scrappy in person? No, I, oh, I tell he's him even if, better. If I see that dog in person, I'm stealing your fucking dog, Darshell. Oh, he's keep so, that dog away from amazing. me. Hey Gus, he I will, like a little I will Ewok. help you steal Gus, that dog. I, even I steal though that dog. you don't follow me, I'm following you now. Oh, thank you. I follow you, Gus. I follow Gus. I'm your newest follower. Oh, that's so nice. Let me see your thing. So nice. Wow, see what, what, a nice, what a nice photo. I think you probably photo. have more posts than I do now. What a nice photo <laughs> of Gus. <laughs> he has, you have really great photos, actually. You have a pretty yeah. well curated Instagram account. Thank you. I, I need to, I, I'm actually thinking about it. I need to take more. I'm, I'm trying to post more there because Snapchat's just such fucking pile of garbage now. Literally like, I, 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 I can't, I can't fucking bring myself to use it anymore. So yeah. I need to, I need to get back onto Instagram to replace it. I'm Did, about to hear my one year anniversary on Instagram. <laughs> Did uh wow. <laughs> I joined in 2017. That's not <laughs> exactly state of the art. But you, do you because you don't follow anybody that on Instagram, you don't see people's Instagram stories. Mm -mm. There's a surprising number of people that work at this company that have based their lives around watching The Bachelor. I'm not gonna throw oh. anybody under the bus like Sophie, but there's a number <laughs> of people here I, that uh, watch did, The Bachelor. Did you mm. watch SNL this week? Uh, no, I watched it because you were tweeting about it. I watched some of the clips, and that some of that stuff was fucking I think funny. This was one of the best episodes in a long time. Yeah. I don't watch This Is Us, so I, I was really wasn't familiar with Sterling K. Brown, but he was fucking great. And there was there were several skits where I had to pause it because I was laughing at something I was That's watching. Great. Wow. I cannot wow. remember the last time I watched something on network television and was like laughing out loud at it and having oh, wow. to, to pause it. It was yeah. there were some skits that were just fucking amazing. Do you want to talk a little bit more about Ready Player One? Because we have Ashley, who's also seen the movie. Let's talk about the movie. I want, I want, I want to hear more? some impressions. Do we have the? Are uh, you cool? Ash, so do, do you, this. Okay. Do are you have a Parcival cool? impression? Parcival cool? impression. How I you don't doing? Parcival cool, impression. Bro. What's up with you? How you doing? Hi. Hi. Uh, you know we're recording like a mini cast about Ready Player One right after this, right? Oh, you are. Oh. Are we doing oh, it right yeah, after this? Oh, yeah. So I don't want to. I don't want to steal your thunder. No, for no, that's why I was asking if you're cool with this because we are doing that. No, I want. Well, you you can tease that then. Hey, we're doing a mini cast right after this. <laughs> well, we're recording it, and then I've got to edit it and put it out. Here was something funny that happened about Ready Player One was that once I got out of the movie, uh, I, I generally enjoyed the movie. It's definitely a movie that's 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 geared towards a certain audience, and and I'm part of that audience. Um, and it, I think it's it's genuinely uh, you know got good things about it, and I have critiques that I had problems with certain. Uh, uh, you know, plot problems that have, and even some character choices that I thought were um, invalid in their choices. Um, invalid in what way? Different from the book? No, because the 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 movie adaptation to the book is just night and day. They they uh, they had to adapt it heavily for the movie, and they got rid of a bunch of stuff and changed it a lot. They did. Um, but more you so, notes, like yeah, like actual characters in the movie and their choices they made near the end. That I was like, I would have changed that. But that's just my critiques. I did write something on Twitter about how I could re immediately recognize that this is going to be a movie that there are going to be a lot of people who are going to complain about other people enjoying this movie. And there's going to be a specific reason why they're complaining about those people. And then literally... I like, read your reply to that, by the way. It was, it was like so predictive. Oh, the person on Twitter who said it to me, I'm not even talking about that. Uh, I read a, a review by someone at io9 
who their entire review of Ready Player One was them just complaining about the audience at South by Southwest's reaction to watching Ready Player One. At no point did they critique any plot choices or writing or production elements or anything like that. They just complain about people enjoying it at the premiere. Say, and they were critical of that. Yeah, and they were mad about it. And they, really? And, yeah, and I was like, there that you go. audience was super into it. It's like Paramount seats what twenty five hundred people, like twenty two hundred. Paramount, yeah. I think, is sixteen hundred. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's a lot. It was at least two thousand. It's a lot know, it for is. a movie theater. Yeah, it's a lot, and uh, it's like got two decks and balconies and all yeah. that stuff. It's a really cool fucking theater. What? Um, if you've attended RTX, it's where the Bare Naked Lady show was, where oh, yeah, yeah. where they came and performed there. Right. Um, but the yeah, theater, I, according I to like Wikipedia's twelve seventy capacity. Twelve seventy. Yeah. Okay, well, that's oh, a lot wow, for yeah. movie theater. So it's almost thirteen hundred. Ashley, what did you think? I thought the audience made the movie for me. Yeah, I enjoyed it. There is something about watching a movie with an audience that is enjoying it, and they're enjoying it like out loud, like sometimes cheering when things happen because it just it brings the whole mood up. Uh, but watching it, uh, I was surprised by some changes from the source material. I like something would happen, I'd go, "Oh, that's different." Hmm. Oh, um, I mean, but I was also like, "But I get why because this would have been really it, boring." Yeah, you know, like that, like the, some of the material would have been pretty boring. Uh, on film and not take advantage of the like the over the top crazy things that they could do with this this virtual world and so uh, it makes sense that they would change those things and so uh, I was thinking that throughout the movie but I was like this is gonna be polarizing there are gonna be book purists who hate the fact that it was changed in any way even though Ernest Klein worked on the screenplay yeah the adaptation yeah. of the screenplay's first draft was by Ernie Klein and his and then it was worked on with Zach his writing Penn. partners. Yeah. yeah, Zach Penn. I mean, every book has to change a little bit to be adapted for. This has changed. This oh, is more a than a little bit. It's a lot. It is this a lot. is a, this like it keeps a lot of the overall structure. Mm -hmm. I would say this. This but, is not. This is not a. This is not a plot spoiler. But in the book, there's three major quests that they have to get through for this game. Two of the three quests. They change completely. In completely, the they change everything a little bit, but they change two of them completely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there, you know, yeah, there are things that are not in the books that we already knew based on the trailer. We're in the movie. There's not a giant racing scene. There's not in an the Iron books, Giant, and that's front and center in the trailers. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. it? Oh yeah, that's true. Now we're obviously we're doing everything we can to avoid any kind of spoilers for the movie whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, I was only mentioning what was in the trailer. Yeah, though. and it is though. It's. I mean, my opinion of it is. People are going to come out of this. They're going to say they're going to see people who like it and like all the references and everything. And I think even some people on the internet uh, are going to be especially critical about it. And it's one of those things where it's like, this is the culture that we've created for ourselves. It's like meme culture of like, hey, you know this. This is interesting, mm -hmm. you know. And people go all in on that in some parts of our culture. But then when they see a movie like this, they're like, they will somehow hate it. Like it'll feel like pandering. I'm sure to yeah. some people, you know. Mm -hmm. I. I, seeing it with this audience, I loved it. I wish everybody could see that movie the opening night of a convention. Like opening yeah. night Comic Con. Yeah. You're like, that's like the yeah. perfect the, the way to see it. I think so I think you probably it. will get to experience that a little bit, especially if you catch it opening weekend well, when it so. premieres, because opening weekend will have the major fanboys going to see it first off, especially if you can go see it opening night. You'll probably get that experience best. And I would I would advise that's probably yeah. gonna be your, your ideal so, experience. So Just try I, to I, have fun when you see it. That's yeah. my recommendation. I'm mm -hmm. uh, I've I've been looking forward to the movie. Uh I was very Mixed with the book, there were some things that I really didn't like in the book. So I'm I'm really curious to see how it plays out. Saying you're know, hearing that they've changed some stuff in that translation, so I'm curious to see if they, I, I would if say that stuff I don't like has been changed. My my I would say they fixed some things and then kind of broke a couple things in fixing others. And I will say this: the whole price of admission is worth it for a section that comes midway through the movie. Yes, that if you get it. Good lord, is it fucking brilliant. I mean, it is just really just a, a ton of fun. And hopefully by that point in the movie, you're like completely on board. And then you also understand what they're doing in that scene. Well, there's even like a, the, there's a point in the, this is in the trailer. There is a race in the movie. And there's a point in the race where I realized they cut out music. And it was all just Foley and sound work. And I loved it. It was so visceral and like very like the, the it made the race very kinetic and 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 like every sound hit you of what was happening. Love that. So that was that was just cool. a very fun sequence. And by the way, this is what this, the VR environment would be like. I mean, it would be we see it in VR chat. Everyone has these licensed avatars. Right. They just this is what people do. So it's actually a very realistic I yeah, think representation uh, of that reality avatars that's definitely what's in VR chat now yeah there's VR chat there's racist <laughs> you know stuff. what is yeah, funny the, about the, the, the first time I ever got into VR chat I was transported to a ruby chibi room 
And I was, was like, perfect. this is really surreal. Like, where am I? We, uh, a couple of us went to the, the, so Ready Player One also took over a space downtown. They're doing like something for South By where they have like, um, they built a Western town and they, they, gave they you basically hats. like, Sorry. they basically, um, revamped this entire bar. So they have like the stacks from the movie mm-hmm. in one area and, um, the Oasis in another area. Hey, that's right. You and loaned me Ready Player One. You're the one I borrowed I it did. from. Yeah. Um, the yeah, the, yeah, not the movie. Um, and a few of us had Wink. went there to yeah. the to the place, and while we were there, we heard rumors that the main character of the movie I forget his name, the actor, uh, Parsifal is the main character, Ty yeah. something, yeah, I don't know his name either, Ty Sheridan, Aust- an Austin local, yeah, apparently. Oh, really? mm-hmm. Um, we were like hanging out, all of a sudden, we hear people cheering, he starts DJing at this party, but he's DJing in VR, so like we see the screens on what he's looking at. But it's like from an audience perspective, so boring because all you see is just watching like, someone in VR. Someone just like this. <laughs> yeah, VR is hard to sell from a, like a audience standpoint. It's an like experiential yeah. product. It really yeah. is. And everyone was there with their cameras, waiting for him to take off the thing so they could get a picture of him. Because yeah. like it was just him with this giant, giant VR goggle thing on the whole time. And it, that that does present, and I think one of the biggest challenges for the movie is. Showing the real world and where the Oasis, this VR environment, is so important to everybody all over the world. But showing them using it still comes across as dorky and yeah. like, oh my god. Yeah. yeah. It looks bad every single time. Yeah, every single time. <laughs> it's like, it, it, But that's also realistic in a way, you know? It's what's it set in 2045? Is that yeah, right? in 2040. Yeah, 2040 something. 20, yeah. 40 something. Yeah. So like, well, I remember like reading the book, they said they had like even like the hand mm-hmm. stuff that they could have more control. Haptic yeah. gloves. Haptic yeah, gloves. and haptic suits and stuff like that, and chairs, I think, in the in the. Um, and you're able rigs. to like walk. Yeah, for- and a lot of that stuff is showing how they do that stuff and showing the virtual reality environment. It's cool. And it's like, I mean, really, I mean, this we're headed this way. I mean, there's going to be something like the Oasis probably in our lifetime. Well, you know, our know, chat is yeah. the first step. Yeah, something like that. Ruby Chibi. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was something. I think of WoW as being like the first step of big MMOs, you know, but... Excuse me, EverQuest would like a word. All right. And before that, Ultima Online would like a word. What was one you played? EverQuest. You were EverQuest, yeah. Well, excuse me then, MUDs would like a word. (laughs) Adventure. I I like words. I I used to play one that was Sojourn Mud, I think is what it was called. So, fucking stare at a a block of text. Well, that was my video, that was my game. So, any any other comments that we can make? Uh, watch the. It's going to be on the no. We're going to do a mini cast. Spoiler about free. Ready Player One. Yeah, this one will be spoiler free. We'll do a spoiler cast later, but it feels weird to do a spoiler cast before it's out for anyone to watch. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler free. Because then I would I wouldn't want to do that because then people would then probably weaponize that. Yeah. And like watch it and then just spoil it for people in comments. Why do people do that? I'm just. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, they, it was so sad. We went to the the premiere and they even like Spielberg and his crew were up there and they were asking like, hey. If you guys could try to avoid a couple, like some of these major, like they point out a few of the major spoilers that were big surprises, that were things that like weren't really in the book, and like if you guys could avoid that, and I, I have like, like I had a faith in people in the audience that they would do it, but there's been reviews that completely already spoiled major parts of the movie. Of course, you know it's funny because this when we talk about spoilers, I remember one time there's words that sometimes they have a negative connotation, but then they grow to be beyond. What the thing like people don't know what the word means anymore. I remember one time I was with a game developer and uh, They were talking about someone was was going to be putting out a spoiler cast For the story of their game before the DLC came out and like I was like why would people do that? Why would people intentionally spoil it for people that they're doing that? I go, no, it's a warning that they're gonna be talking in depth about the plot of your game not that they're right, trying to tell right. people, like, ruin it for people. They're warning people, don't watch this in case you want to ruin it. Yeah. And the, to me, the the phrase that's being perverted, I think, the most now is the phrase pay to win. Pay to win is what people say about something when they just don't like it. Mm. It's like, if something has transactions, and like they, they say, oh, this game's pay to win. Uh, I don't know about that. I wouldn't go that far. I hear it all the time yeah, when people I mean, refer to something like Fortnite is pay to win. How is Fortnite pay to win? It's all cosmetic Fortnite. shit. I don't know. Yeah. Weren't they saying that about when PUBG was adding the loots as well? They were like, oh, it's pay to win now. I was like, no, it's just yeah. to get a skirt. Yeah. You get, I mean, if you I mean, if you win by getting a checkered jacket. I've never gotten that skirt. I would wear the I shit have, out of that skirt I if have I got found, it. I have found it twice in game, and both times I put it on, I was killed immediately. Oh, bummer. Oh, I meant like, I, I want to get it for my inventory. I know, like, but I at least saw it, it and yeah, actually yeah. got to wear it. I, I have I, a cowboy hat in PUBG that I love, but as soon as I get a helmet, it's gone. I have two in real life. Give me that cowboy hat. I know you do. Mine's Full brown circle. though. 
somewhere in between the two. All right, so we'll come we'll come watch uh, the mini cast for Ready Player One on the no on the no. Thanks, Ash. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of film, did you see that uh, Gabriel Del Toro's launching that um, scholarship for uh, to promote um, film students in Mexico? That's no, really? Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and uh, so I, I saw it announced. I think the Hollywood Reporter tweeted about it, and of course, immediately I was like, I want to see what the replies to this are. Mm. Someone was like, Can you imagine if instead of saying scholarship for Mexicans, it said scholarship for white Americans? And I'm like, you realize that they're using the word Mexicans to mean citizens of the country Mexico, right? It's like, oh god, <laughs> it's just so fucking toxic and awful. I was like, oh, that's that's a person I'm gonna put on mute, even though I've never interacted with them. But guys, what about Men's International Day? <laughs> god, Which exists, by the way. Yeah, it does exist. <laughs> Fuck yeah. out of here. Great, great times. <laughs> but Gus, what about what about what about my time? Okay, <laughs> when, about when do I get a moment? So, I just recently learned about this story. And I guess it took a while for it to come out anyway, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it came up when uh, Guillermo del Toro won uh, the won Best Picture for uh, Shape of Water. Mm -hmm. um, I never fucking heard this story. Apparently, uh, when Guillermo del Toro was working on Mimic way back in the day, was that Mira Sorvino in that? Yeah, it was Mira Sorvino. That was like, uh, oh, five? Del Toro did Mimic. Yeah, I didn't know. It's one of his first that. movies. Yeah. Oh wow. He did Mimic, oh. and uh, I remember that movie. Apparently, during that process. Um, uh, his uh, father was kidnapped in Mexico. What? And the 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 kidnappers demanded a, something like a million or two million. Depending on what you read, it's either a million or two million dollar ransom. Oh my god! And it was completely derailing the movie and everything like that. And because this is fucking incredible, because they were good friends and they'd gotten to know each other. Um, however, the, sa the their savior eventually arrived in the form of one of the greatest directors the action genre has ever produced. James Cameron, Cameron. Del Toro and James Cameron were old friends having met during the pre-production of Del Toro's 1993 cult hit Kronos. The pair uh, struck up a lasting friendship thanks to their mutual passion for all things cinema. Over the next couple of years, et cetera, et cetera, uh, eventually sense. James Cameron learned of uh, Del Toro's father's kidnapping and without hesitation, he immediately sought out his old friend and took him directly to a bank where he handed over $1 million in cash to him. Wow. Mimic was in 97, by the way. Is that wrong? Yeah, it was a Nick long time ago. Mm -hmm. Holy yeah. shit. Uh, that's a friend. Dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's ride or die. Hey, Bernie, would you pay for if I got if I got kidnapped? If you, you got kidnapped? Yeah. yeah, I'd pay to get you no, back. Not you, your parents. You wouldn't be a million, though. I mean, I'd be like, let's negotiate. Wait, how much do you think I would be? How much for just the hair? That's what I'd say. <laughs> can, we get that? Yeah. can we get that back? That's the most valuable. <laughs> yeah. How much am I insured under Bernie's hostage? Dude, I'm, I'm, can I be honest? I'm, I don't even want to have this conversation. <laughs> I really don't. I don't want to talk about stuff like this oh, on I'm the sorry. air. You're no, right. I mean, it's just like. You're right. Yeah. No, I, I, I hope nothing bad ever happens to you, John. God, it's crazy. But this is an incredible story to me. And apparently they, they went and paid the, from what I could tell, they paid the ransomers or the kidnappers and then that's it. He, like never. That ended know, that way with the paying and who then. Who knows if he ever got his money back or if he just like, here's, here's a million. That's five. still, that's still like, like in some, most ways, best case scenario of like that kind of a situation. Paid the money, got the person back. They're fine. Yeah. That's yeah. Nuts. Right. Yeah. Um, that's unbelievable. And I'm, it's just, I, I'm getting this story from cinemablend.com. It's an article from three years ago. That's amazing if that's a true story. And then the story is actually what now? 20, 20 years ago? 20, 20 years, years old at this yeah. point. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. And it's like, it's it was really interesting because seeing Steven Spielberg on stage last night and then you see the speech that Guillermo del Toro made uh, at the Oscars, they're just like, the, seem like the sweetest, nicest people mm -hmm. on the planet. Like Spielberg just rolls out. He's got sneakers on. He legitimately seemed nervous. He yeah. reminds me of my dad. Spielberg? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Just like just friendly. Like super nice. Yep, super nice. Just and I'm sure look, you don't get to that level as a director and I'm sure he's like, Demanding sure yeah, but I mean his the persona is definitely just seems like the nicest dude on the planet like having a good time Like he was nervous. And he had notes. And yeah, like, I want to I want to I worked in this movie for three years I don't want to mess this up in the next three minutes So let me just <laughs> I'm just gonna read from these cards He walked out on stage and they introduced him and people started applauding and then when he came out uh, People went even more nuts and when he heard them go nuts. He even like was getting a little like he like did a little like leg kick, like like he was like like yeah. shy of like oh, how cute. much attention was being given to him in that audience. Yeah, 
What a good guy. And then even the, the director of uh, the South by Southwest Film Festival, she was standing there, she introduced him, and then he did this whole thing and read it. He goes, so hope you hope you really enjoy the movie. And then he's like stood there for like a second, and then he goes, "What do I? What do I do now? Do I? Do I? Do you gonna talk now to her?" It was like this, oh. like this little this moment of just like this human moment. It's, it's like this guy's like a cinema god. I mean, I, I grew up watching this. So are you saying I stood on the same stage as Steven Spielberg? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you were on oh the same stage. God. Although he came after. Yeah, so he stood on the same stage as Barbara Dunkelman. Oh. You were on the same stage as uh, John Krasinski. Was it right Krasinski. before you guys? Yeah. Right? Oh my god. So he directed that Quiet Place too. Yeah, I think that's his. But where was Pam? <laughs> Where was she, Gus? Where was Pam? Make sense. Where was Pam? I love John Krasinski. How big is her head? <laughs> I, I love John Krasinski. She was in Ready Player One. They run through the office at one point. Yeah, killing it was a really weird quick cut. <laughs> Uh, I uh, I would love to see somebody after Ready Player One comes out catalog every single fucking reference in that movie. Oh, there's, <laughs> what? there's too much. There's way the too much. So yeah, much. I think there was like a video uh, someone put up on YouTube, like just identifying all the references just in the trailer, I, and it's like hundreds. I can't wait for the uh, steamed hams, but it's Ready Player One video. What? Have y'all not seen these a million the steamed, steamed hams, hams videos? Yeah. No. Is there? It's a no. meme online right now. I love steamed hams. See, this is it. This is what I'm saying. It's a meme culture. It's like, this is where we are now, you know? It's, it's, you could say that Ready Player One is, like, I don't know. It's, if, if there is, like, geek culture, it's like geek cultural appropriation. <laughs> it's a fan service movie. It is, or fan service or whatever. It's pandering or whatever. But this is actually what people do yeah. online. This is it what also, they do. Uh, this is also where I, 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 I complain about people complaining about that about the film because it's based on a book that already tells you. You know what you're getting. This is what the book is about. Yeah. This is what you're getting into. And then it's like, well, we made a movie mm -hmm. based on this book. Surprise! Right. Yeah, you, it's a bunch of pop culture. You know what you signed up for. Yeah. It's like, don't get mad at people for enjoying it. If you got critiques about the movie, cool. Bring those up. Yeah. Look at, like, and also just that whole like the the Twitter thing of like, there's like a culture of people who get who tell you you're directly to your face that you're wrong for liking something. Mm -hmm. I, can, I I critique about stuff, but I don't go up to someone and go, no, 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 you're wrong. You should not have yeah. liked that. Speaking of which, The Last Jedi does come out on digital tomorrow and on Blu-ray in two weeks. And oh, wow. the, that, oh. that documentary is on it. Yeah. It's a good doc. That's right. fast. Very quick. Yeah. They were Jeez. giving out, uh, like, free digital copies. That was a fucking Christmas like movie. A weird it's out on home videos. Weeks. What was, like, It's the just getting shorter and shorter now, isn't it, guys? Good. I like that. I like it, too. Yeah. I like it, too. Remember when there was, like, all these oh, companies? Wait, wait. Isn't there a film? I, I saw a, a commercial the other day for a film that they, they, they build. It's, like, still in theaters or you can watch it at home. Well, that happens a lot. Annihilation? Right? But no, it's, it's like, no, it's not Annihilation. But Annihilation's in on Netflix in Europe now. It's their international. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's yeah. with Netflix. Let me look at movies that are out there. Have you seen it? I love that movie. I liked yeah. it. Annihilation was so good. It fucked me up a little bit. But it's, it's, to me, it's Juma like old Jumanji. School. Oh, Jumanji. Mm -hmm. Jumanji, the rock the, one? The new one? Yeah. Oh, but it's still in theaters, but it's been out for a while. It's been out, yeah. I did guess. surprisingly well as much as people didn't want to like it. Yeah. I went and saw the movie. Ashley, for some reason, want to see it. Perfect. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. I thought it was fine. Did you not like it? No. Oh, really? I Annihilation. Thought it was fine. Aren't you Manji? No, Jumanji. Jumanji. Uh -uh. No, Annihilation I liked a lot. I just don't think a lot of people are. Yeah, but sci-fi is hard, dude. If you go That's, that's full... how I felt about Blade Runner. I was like, that's what I told everyone. They said, should I go watch it? I was like, did you like the first Blade Runner? If you don't answer em enthusiastically yes, yes, don't watch it. Don't watch it. Wow. Yeah. Really? You, you think know if you I don't think... enthusiastically like the original Blade Runner, don't go see Twenty Four. That's my opinion, yes. I think that it's 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 very much that kind of movie. It's like slow and methodical, and you have to, I, in my opinion, you have to love that world and know it. In yeah, order I to actually really get have it. mixed feelings about the original and loved the remake. Interesting. Not the remake, you might be the, the first person I've heard say that then. What well, about yeah, I, I, think, I, th I? I'm going to make the internet angry. I think the first one is overrated. What, what first, Blade Runner's overrated? <laughs> I love that first one. Heard an audible whistle yeah. from across the room. Yeah, it's okay. Come at me. All right. Well, we got to wrap Please up. Please don't. But have I, you seen Annihilation? I haven't. I really need to see. See, that's it. what I would say. I yeah. say, did you like the last thirty minutes? Did you get something out of the last thirty minutes of two thousand one of Space Odyssey? Ooh. If you did, then yes. That's an interesting thing to say. Yeah. Well, it's just like it's easy when you make a movie about aliens or something that the aliens are like people and talk to us. But if you don't know how to interact with Whatever this energy being or whatever they are, you know. Yeah, I didn't like at the end of Annihilation when they showed up and they were taking the form of uh, the of Natalie Portman's father and they wanted to talk to her. Stop about... it! That's contact. <laughs> All right. Well, he's the not spoiling anything. I do want to. <laughs> I, I do want to remind everyone that the Receipt Podcast is now on Spotify. I think we were actually featured there. <gasps> on the we were. Second page today. 
Uh, but we're there. So Shout out to Spotify. Spotify. Check us out. Shout out to Ez for making that happen. Uh, One phone call. I'm so mad. One thanks, phone call. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>